What is happening, y'all? I am live with Jameson Tyone here. Uh, welcome to the Pitcher List playback uh, stream. Jameson, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is going to be cool. Oh, man. So uh, if you're unfamiliar with this, um, we've talked to Pablo Lopez and Aaron Savali before and Jameson Tyone. I, I, I've been following you for ages uh, through the Pirates. I've got my Jameson Tyone shirt from 2019 on today uh, because I'm just stoked to talk about your... Um, your transitions over the years, you've obviously dealt with injuries and you've had to kind of relearn your mechanics at times. And uh, you had your year with the the Cubs and there are things even from that that you've wanted to to change and manipulate. And I'm really excited to see what you do in 2024. And of course, we're going to watch this entire game uh, in September uh, against the Diamondbacks. And you're going to break that down with us. But before we do all of that, I just wanted you to get an opportunity to talk about what you throw and you know what your approach is in general uh, when you're on the mound. Yeah. 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 I mean, you, you hit it. Um, you know, I've had two elbow surgeries. So after 2019, I kind of just, it had been something that I'd wanted to do, um, was changing my delivery and my mechanics a little bit just to take stress off my arm. And when I got that second Tommy John surgery, I was kind of like, that's, that's a sign right there. If I don't clean something up here mechanically, you know, right. I, I had really good stuff back then and I was getting great results, but it's like, I'd rather be able to take the ball and be out there. Um, and you know, so I went, back to the drawing board, worked with the Florida baseball ranch, got a ton of cool plyo drills, started throwing weighted balls, connection balls. I used the core velocity belt. Like how can I move my lower body yeah. more efficiently, which translates up the chain to my arm path. Um, so yeah, that kind of took, that was 2019, 2020 COVID was a great time for me baseball wise to like take a step back, mm -hmm. really go back to the drawing board and focus on development because for years as a big league player, like, it's about results. What can I do right here, right now? Yeah. Get results. It kind of loses that long-term view. So COVID year was a, an excuse for me being a rehab year and with there being such a break in baseball to just like get away from it all, kind of re reimagine myself as a player and as a pitcher and how I want my routine to look and my delivery and, and all that. So fast forward, um, got traded to the Yankees, started pitching up a little bit more in the zone, um, was getting more carry on my fastball sinker lost some some uh you know i guess some depth or some some results at least um you know it took me a little while to get comfortable with throwing my slider again and what my curveball would look like because i really did change a lot um and i feel like over time i've kind of settled back in like i'm not as short armed as i was in 2021 but i'm not as long as i was back in the day right added a sweeper this past year it's kind of just ever evolving like from year to year yeah you know? I had the sweeper. I had a pretty decent slider in 22. My cutter started off the year getting bombed this year. So I was like, maybe I can make this cutter a hybrid old slider combo. So I'm still just always tinkering something. I'm playing right now with the idea of adding a, either a split or like a changeup that I can find. A way oh, to get man. On. So wait, wait, what is a, I mean, I don't know if you have a baseball with you, but when it comes to splitters, this was the thing I threw in college. And I messed around with different grips. One that is close to Kodai Senga's, uh, okay. but it's not quite. Um, like Kodai does. Uh, what, what the interesting thing about splits to me is that a lot of guys just focus on the bulge of the ball, right? Yep. They just they're focused on that alone, and I hated that because it didn't feel consistent. It yep. didn't feel like every time I shoved it in my hand, it wasn't good. It's why I actually called the splitters the most volatile pitch, and I. I'm openly against it being a reliable offering. Um, yep. Great for like a two strike offering. Great against lefties. Cool. But if that's your strike pitch and yep. your number two, it, that's not going to be a consistent thing because you just shove it in and it's not the same thing. But um, what Kodai does is that he actually grips it. So it's on the seams. So it's these index fingers actually on the seam inconsistent there. Yep. And his middle finger is up on the ball a little bit. So it's almost like he's splitting one seam with it. So this I was is interesting. To... I've I've got my grip right here. Right. <laughs> so yeah. Right. So you're. It is similar you're more of a traditional. Point. I get the the index really on that seam, and then I'm just I'm still playing on where I want the the middle finger to go. But mm -hmm. I agree with what you said. Like, so for me, I'm at a point in my career where like I throw strikes. I know I can throw my four and two seam for strikes. I can yeah. throw my curveball for a strike. I can throw my cutter for a strike. Like the sweeper, I can if I need to. So it's like. To lefties, I need a pitch that I can just throw like below the zone consistently. And even if it's even if it's not a pitch that I punch a bunch of dudes out, like I need to show them something 
that mm-hmm. goes that way. Right. Versus right. everything breaking in or up. Yeah. I need something that goes that way that I show and that they yeah. put in their in their scouting reports and game plans so they can't just go up there and be like, hey, it's going to be moving into you, clear the hips or, you know, whatever. So well, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I mean, I think also for you, for someone who has that ability and showcased it to be able to throw strikes and actually have consistency in delivery, that's a much better uh, selling point to me. I, yeah. I believe that you can do that as opposed to other guys. Like, yeah, I've got a split. I'm like, yeah, but you can't command the other pitch. Like, yep. I, I can't depend on you to yeah. do that one. For um, me, it's it, obviously, I, if, if it turns into a really reliable, good pitch for lefties, like, I would be ecstatic. Yeah. But if it's something that's even, like, league average, but I can throw to lefties and command it well. Absolutely. For, for me, like, it really, at the big league level with the good hitters, it's so important just to put things in their head and, you know, their eyes, like – just to be able for them to go back to the dugout and have, you know, let's just, just say Matt Olson, have Matt Olson go into the dugout and be like, man, he threw me a split. I haven't yeah. seen that before. And maybe if that gets him off my heater in a later at bat a little bit, you know, that, that right there alone is worth it. Yeah. Uh, you've come so far since that four seamer change. Uh, I remember that when I, I, when we last uh, spoke, like on an interview was, uh, was right before everything shut down. I think it was February 29th. 2020 we're all like oh man this is the year this is going to be great uh and at that time um we asked you about the slider you had with the pirates uh you had this new one that came out in may and really changed your season that year um and now you've moved to the sweeper and yeah what what kind of happened with that slider was that when you came back from tommy john did it uh was it just a different feel at that point and your mechanics are a little bit different yeah so with my old arm path like i was so long Mm -hmm. that at foot strike a lot of the time um, my arm would just be dragging so I would hit foot plant and my arm would be behind my body and it was easy for me to like leverage like around the baseball because I was late so I could like really cork it and then when I shortened my arm path I found myself being earlier so it's harder to like get truly get like around the ball I found myself getting behind it a little more so I was getting a little more lift um Mm -hmm. And it just became more like a cutter at first with the Yankees. And um, so that's a pitch that I was kind of just turning into like a command pitch, you know, if I yeah. can dump four seam down and away and throw this tight slider right off that to a, to right. a right here, backdoor it to a lefty. Um, so yeah, that pitch changed a lot. And then the sweeper, the Cubs kind of came to me and they were like, you know, we've identified you as a guy where this pitch really could help. Um, it was great. Yeah. And, like, to be completely honest, the sweeper, I went into the season this year, like, really not feeling comfortable with it. Like, it's a mm-hmm. totally new pitch, totally new grip. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying that's the only reason I struggled in the first half, but, like, sometimes they would put it down. They would call it in a big spot, and I'm like, okay, throw it like a curveball, get it out front. Like, I'm, like, running right. through my, my right. cues with it. And by the end of the year with the sweeper, I was, like, foot in the ground, arm up, like, rip it. And, yep. and that's when you know you have a pitch that you're finally like confident and comfortable with. And I didn't know how to sequence it. I didn't know what hitters I like throwing it to. Like, sure. I was kind of just going out there with it and just every outing taking kind of information and processing it and, and trying to see how I wanted to use this pitch. And I feel like I have a, a way better understanding of it now. And do you save that only against right-handers? Or you don't throw that against left-handers. I maybe threw three sweepers against lefties yeah. this year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's not something that I'm totally against, but like I know it performs much better against righties. Well, of course, lefties, right? Yeah. The only time I would throw it to a lefty would maybe be against a guy that's like shown patience mm-hmm. to a backdoor breaking ball or something, or sure. maybe I don't have my best curveball that day and I just want to land something to a patient lefty. But well, fortunately, not every hitter is Juan Soto hitting the opposite yeah. field uh, breaking ball, right? Yep. Uh, <laughs> but I. Uh, but yeah, I mean that that's one of the interesting things I'm seeing. You know, we uh, we went over the Cubs last week on this uh, on the live stream here, and I didn't finish it because I wanted to actually write the whole thing about you after you know we talked and all. And I uh, yeah, the two things that uh, really startled me about just kind of I remember Jama from the from the Yankees, cool high four seamers all the time, high swing strike rates on that had success there, but just had nothing to really set up underneath it and to make yep. it make both really even better because of that. Um, and, uh, you know, and what were you t- talking about actually earlier about that situation uh, with the Yankees and, you know, what your approach was then? Yeah. So, you know, the Yankees had a model that showed that like my pitch metrics with my arm angle and all that, like my four seam up was going to play extremely well. So mm-hmm. 
I went into that season of 2021 and it seemed like every fastball I threw was up in the zone, which yeah. by theory, it's like, yeah, okay, this guy struggles with a fastball up. I have a good one. It makes a lot of sense. So I'd go like, right. oh, oh, fastball up, swing and miss. Then you got to throw it again. I'd throw it, oh, one, up in the zone. I'd get a foul ball. That's them showing that they're starting to figure it out a little bit. And then I'd throw it like, oh, two, maybe not get it as high as I want, maybe not make it a waste pitch or whatever. And I was getting like crushed with it or I was getting foul ball to death. Um, so then it became kind of like, okay, how can I get creative and buy strikes and put myself in good counts and maybe protect the fastball up. So maybe it's throwing a cutter or slider high to a lefty by sure. a striker back door or dotting something down in a way to a guy who I know wants the ball in and then going up later in account. Right. So, you know, it's obviously throw your best pitch more, but like, unless you're Garrett Cole, where you can literally bully guys at 98 <laughs> and just throw it every time. And yeah. Then figure and then out. also have an amazing yeah. slider underneath it. Yeah. Right. It's just, you know, it's not that easy just to say, go throw your fastball up. Yeah, um, right, then, right, of course. We were just talking before we started. Like, this past year, it was just, for a little while there, I was trying to get kind of my legs under me, and I felt like I was just trying to survive out there for the first couple starts or first couple months. And it was like, yeah, every time I tried to throw a fastball up, it was just, like, totally uncompetitive, um, which could be a – it was a delivery thing, and we were working all, on all that behind the scenes. But then – you know, mid season, it's not a time to like go crazy with your adjustments. We just well, right, was yeah, relatively working at the time that I could execute, and we just went with that. And so, hopefully, this next year, I can like combine kind of the delivery changes I was making and the game planning. Um, yep. You know, I was doing with pitching coaches and go out there and like package that all together. Yeah. Oh man. I mean. Look, I, I see this sweeper. And I would love to hear more. Actually, Sarah Sanchez is in the chat and saying, like, I want to know more about this because this is, to us, it's like, oh, man, finally, Jameson, you got the thing. You know, we've been waiting for you to have that compliment uh, for ages. And I remember even with, like, the Pirates, uh, it was the curveball at first, but it wasn't mm -hmm. quite that kind of overwhelming thing. Um, and I remember there were some games with the Yankees, too, that you had it working, yep. like, the curveball down in a way. And uh, But this sweeper, to me, I mean, yeah, the se second half of it, Amazing. I mean, just destroyed the righties a ton. It was your most most successful pitch as far as mitigating hard contact as well. Um, and uh, it is it is hard uh, on my end to be like, oh man, this four seam that used to be just right there. Yep. And even pitch shape stuff, sure, it's a little bit different. Um, yep. slightly less uh, IVB on it, right? Um, but still good. And I uh, and seeing that it fell down a bit right into the death zone of the the away to righties, um, yep. which made it more hittable and stuff. It's like, oh, you just like so close and here i am just in my arm chair yeah. like oh cool we'll just move these pieces here and yeah this I mean, here you know <laughs> part, of it is, part of it is that easy it's like just bringing awareness to like do i need to throw my fastball up more yeah but then it's like okay let's go back it up up the mound a little bit and it's like okay yeah. what can i do to consistently execute the pitch shape i want to the area i want and need um so yeah for me it was like just a delivery thing. Like I was leaking and spraying the ball up. Like my arm path got a little long at times this year again, which is when you mm -hmm. see the fastball shape dip. So this off season has been a big, I'm trying to tighten it back up a little bit. Um, so I can have that more consistent fastball shape, which I think should help me pitch up more consistently and not have those big uncompetitive misses. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll see. It's, I'm, it's something you're just always chasing is that improvement and yeah. finding a way to, to be the best version of yourself. But in a perfect world, like sometimes it is that simple too. It's like you need someone to tell you, Hey, why aren't you throwing this pitch? You know, mm -hmm. like you get into your comfort comfort zone and your routine of, Oh man, this is my package to lefties. This is my package to righties. And right. for someone like me, like I, I do. One of my biggest strengths is that I do have the capability and the pitch ability to do different things. Exactly. So if, you do. Yeah, if I'm falling into the routine of throwing the same three pitches to the same three areas, like that's doing myself a disservice. Like I can mm -hmm. throw to every quadrant and throw every pitch to every quadrant. Well, I mean, to that to that point, I mean, you still have the amazing skill of sinkers inside to righties. Um, forty percent O swing. I, I say this often. Over thirty percent on a sinker is you're doing it right. If you're forty percent, you're in elite territory with it, and you do it exactly how you're supposed to. Yeah, so that uh, pitch for me is like not so metrically good. very good. It doesn't matter. If you get that thing inside, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so oh, I, I came up it. through the pirate system, which you know back in the day, oh, they yeah. preached fastballs in, sinkers in. So it's like 
for me at my core, like that's a big part of who I am as a pitcher is being able to pitch in mm. two seams to righties, yeah. riding the four into lefties. And I do feel like sometimes I get away from that because in this game now it's so much like swing and miss and all. And it's like, Mm-mm. I don't get a ton of swing and miss on my sinker, but I command it extremely well. And I know how to avoid damage in there. So you really do. It's, oh, it's the most underrated skill, I think, um, is sinkers to same handed batters that are actually inside. You have a 70% inside location on sinkers. And yes, that that is how you do it. So, so like with right handers, to me, it's just like, oh, cool. You got the sinker there. You've got the sweeper that's working incredibly well away. Um, you have the cutter if you need a secondary pitch for a strike as well. Um, and that's why, uh, that's why even last week, I was like, okay, I got to hold on. Jameson, this fast, we got to figure out, we can't put the fastball there because honestly, if you just removed it from everything else, even doing sinker inside cutters and sliders, that honestly is good enough for a lot of pitchers themselves. Yeah. Um, and this fastball was just, uh, which used to be your best friend, uh, yeah. is just all of a sudden looking a little and raggedy and we can fix flip that. What I just said, like the ability to have the pitch ability can sometimes yeah. hurt too, because it's like, we're tr- sometimes I try to do so much where it's like, dude, it's not that hard. It's like, it could be as simple as a four seam up to a lefty, a really good aggressive curveball down in a backdoor cutter, whatever to mm-hmm. righties. It could be as simple as sinkers, cutter, sweeper, you know, it right. depends on the day and stuff, but it's like, sometimes you, you just muddy yeah, the water, <laughs> over complicate it when you really don't have to. Yeah. Oh man. I, I want to, I'm going to go into this, I think more when we talk about the game, but uh, more about just pitch by pitch, your mentality and your focus. I love what you were talking about with the sweeper saying, cool. I'm thinking of this like a curveball Now I'm going to do this because with a sweeper, you specifically, um, I mean, if you're doing the traditional one, which is essentially just really hamming on that seam inside, you know, just yep. getting as much as you can around that. Uh, so much so, I think uh, Lance McCullers called it throwing a pizza. I was like, okay, that's too much. Yeah. That is that is elbow trouble. Um, but I, uh, it's it, I love hearing that kind of thing because especially as me as a as a pitcher, I would think about my index finger all the time and how I'm getting yep. it out, where I'm putting that pressure and turning. Uh, and I'm really curious to hear about that with all of your pitches. But the last thing I want to get to before we watch this is, you know, we just focus on the right hand approach. Feels like that's okay. We got that good lefties um yeah you're talking about adding a splitter to it and this year it was four seamer cutter uh curveball more moving away yep. from the sweeper um and not really a sinker I-, I assume that would be front hip sinkers if you're trying to throw a sinker yeah and that can be super dangerous like if yes a front oh, hip man. Sinker, it needs to be to a guy that you you know is going to be a take because <laughs> right. yeah. that can be the absolute damage zone like it's like my sinker to a lefty is essentially a dead zone fastball and right. if it doesn't get to the edge and get them kind of out of the way. So it's one of those pitches, like, I would have to set up properly and yep. make sure it's a patient guy. Let's say, uh, I don't know, a, a Max Muncy in a 3-2 count. Like, yeah, someone who, yeah. like, walks a lot or, you know, whatever. Yep. Um, I remember I used to like it to, like, Ben Zobris back in the day. Like, a patient <laughs> dude who, you know, yeah, something that absolutely. starts as a ball and ends as a strike is really yep. good. But that's a, that's a risky one. Um but yeah, I mean, it's good to have the options. Right. So, so f- are you thinking, uh, you know, moving forward with this, that that three pitch combo, adding the splitter, is that you know, walk us through that approach generally for you? Yeah, I mean, going into the year against lefties, I would say like just generic lefty coming up to plate. I know my strengths are going to be a fastball up, a curveball, mm-hmm. and I thought it was going to be a cutter inside. Right. Um, but that pitch was getting absolutely bombed to like a 1200 yeah. OPS. Like I was putting some, like I have one that really sticks out. I threw Brandon Marsh a cutter up and in like on the black and he hit a homer off me this year. And I was like, <laughs> all right, if I'm That's going into there. a lefty from here on out the rest of the way, it's going to be a fastball. Like I'm not getting right. beat on basically a, a weaker fastball. Like I'm just sure. not going to do it. Um, so that's kind of when I started like backdooring the cutter more, especially yep. to patient lefties, something that starts as a ball comes around and ends as a strike, um, move the fastball around, throw the curveball. The curveball got better as the year went on, but I was having a hard time for whatever reason, bouncing it this year. I threw mm-hmm. it for a strike way too much when I didn't want to. Yeah. Um, so that's something going forward. I want to, I want to bury the curveball more and obviously to earn chase, you have to show that you can throw it for a strike to get that respect, sure. but definitely want to bury the curveball more. Definitely want to go back to pitching up more and hopefully ideally have that good shape on a fastball. 
Yeah. Um, Alex Fast would call it the Imperial Shuttle, but then he'll forget what it's actually called, the Imperial Starship or something. He always forgets his own term. But uh, it would be the triangle, right? You have the four yep. seamer upstairs, and then you have something going into them and something going away to them. Uh, and it is really surprising that the, the cutter didn't work out as well as it used to. Um, because, I mean, you generally did keep it glove side, and yeah, Brandon Marsh did that. Because yeah. Brandon Marsh, whatever, had a moment when he was looking at it and yep. on it for whatever reason. Yep. Um, but it makes all the sense in the world that that would be a proper compliment, especially if you're establishing the heater upstairs yep. and falling back down, right? And it's like, you know, I've, we've thought about a lot of things. So, I, you know, you, to every left-handed, to every hitter, you have like a generic pitch package of like, yeah. these are my strengths to righties, these are my strengths to lefties. And then you, you face a guy who's super aggressive and maybe you cater to that and you switch mm -hmm. it up or you face someone who's super passive and you cater to that. But like overall – you know, it's nice to go into a game and say, these are my strengths. This is who I am at my best. This is what I want to do. And then you adjust based on the guys, you know, yeah, right. three or four hitters in every lineup that like you really need to be careful with and understand let's, I mean, we were talking about the Phillies. Let's use the Phillies. Like you need to know Bryce Harper. What's he doing lately? How aggressive sure. is he? I'm going to move my strengths around to try to maybe hit his weaknesses. Cause mm -hmm. he's good enough to hit my strengths. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe who, a Cassianos, a Schwarber, like whatever at that moment in time, a Trey Turner. But then like the other five guys, like I'm going to just go for my strengths and that's how I game plan. Like my righty pitch package, my lefties, I'm going to pitch to my strengths and then just read the game. Oh man. I have so many questions. Okay. Uh, one, we just added something that was really cool. Um, we have our uh, PLV apps. If for anyone listening aren't familiar with it, you can just go to tools on our homepage and you'll see these lovely cards of hitters or pitchers or their pitches um, created by Kyle Bland, of course, our analytics director. And he just added a new toy on Christmas Day that was for uh, for hitters to showcase their different their four main traits, which is swing aggression, uh, decision value, contact ability and power with heat maps and showing where they excel and where they uh, fail more so so when they make good decisions where they make bad decisions where they have power and they don't and it's been really fun going through like different players um you know bryce harper noting where he does get his power is actually up in a way a ton more than we expected or other guys that just have amazing contact ability down away and you just can't get a slider past them uh, and you know what's, reason. what's really interesting is like i mean this is how i look at scattering reports like yeah. a lot of what you just said is what i go and look at we have on our database like you can lasso areas. Yep. So I could go to Bryce Harper cool. and I could lasso up and away. Yeah. And I could type in like contact uh, rate or swing and miss rate, uh, called strikes, power, like damage, contact yeah. value. And I can look And a lot of times. I think this is like one of the most interesting things about scouting hitters, especially the really good hitters, is that their damage is usually really close to their swing and miss. Because oh like, right, because that's where they're it, selling it, out. Yeah. So I'm again. I'm just. I I don't know, but like Paul Goldschmidt, he might yeah. absolutely hammer fastballs in, but he might also swing and miss at fastballs up and in because he's willing to sell out and take a bigger swing there because he knows he does damage there. Like I mean, I watched like Christopher Morell on our team all year. Yeah. Like <laughs> he swings so hard at his best areas that like he swings and misses at some fastballs up, but if you don't get it up there. Like he's yeah. going to hammer it. So it's like that to me is just so fascinating that these hitters are so dang good that like right. Bryce Harper might hammer middle down curveballs, but he also might chase the curveball at a really high percentage right under it because he's willing to do that because he knows one swing can change the game. Absolutely. Oh, man. And I mean, there's also the question about what kind of quality is that location, right? So yeah. maybe they they destroy average or below average fastballs in that area. But then yep. if it's above average, it's not. Uh, yeah. I, there's so much to look into is, is this the kind of stuff that you do for prep for a game? Yeah. So like, and you, like what you just said, I could go in to our system and say, okay, Bryce Harper hammers fastballs up and away, mm -hmm. but then you go watch it and you start, you, you can watch the video and I don't, I, I mean, I don't know off the top of my head. He might, no, of course, yeah. he hammers good <laughs> fastballs, but I could go in and say 93 and above with 17 right. inches of vert and above. Yeah. And then it might be one for 30 with 20 strikeouts or whatever, you know? It, right. Right. It, that stuff. Garrett Cole does that stuff all the time. Like he'll be like, Oh, this guy hammers fastballs up. Does he hammer my fastball up? Yeah, exactly. And he'll <laughs> go in. And I think it's so sick. Well, like 
he'll just type I, in 97 plus. I love uh, that. With 18 inches of vert. And it's like, yeah. oh, no, they don't hammer that. There's no hard contact up there. This is why I hate seeing just general Woba packages like it's the MLB The Show or something where you just show hot and cold zones. It's like, it's not the same. Right. It's one of what you got. What was even the count yeah. in the situation where you failed on that? Yep. And it generally only shows the the last pitch. Yep. Right. And doesn't show all the other ones that happen in one Oh or whatever. It, yep. It's, ah, it's not the and way every pitcher's it's different. Different. Deception from every yeah. pitcher is different. So like I could type in a guy who's 93 plus with 17 inches of vert on his fastball. But like, if it's not me with the experience against that hitter, like hitters just see the ball differently off guys. Yeah. Like, you know, it, sometimes there's no rhyme or reason. Sometimes someone might struggle with that exact pitch metric in that area but like off me they see it better or vice versa they just don't see it oh man uh and and the last question that really does lead into this i promise this time is uh when you're in the game and you're talking about the game flow uh what are you reading the batter a lot or are you just kind of figuring like their own the reactions like how do you change your game plan pitch the pitch yeah so it's that was a big adjustment with the pitch clock was that like a lot of that self-talk had to speed up this year. Like sure, you're having to think immediately as it's going on. There's no time to like step back, grab the rosin, process what just happened, read a foul ball, think about it. It's, yeah. it took me a little while, especially with how many pitches I throw to like process in 15 seconds. What just happened? What can I do next? What's the scattering report? What's he been doing lately? So that, that part of it is really tricky, but yeah, I mean, I think once like you're in a good flow state with the season, like once I started having more success in the second half, like your gut tells you everything. Like, yeah, I guess I've just pitched long enough and I've been in the league long enough. And I know a lot of the hitters enough to where like the game just starts flowing and you're like, okay, I got a foul ball there. He was late on that. Let's do this. Or man, he, he's not going to be late again. Let's do this. It, right. it, it's all happening out there pretty quick. But for me at, most of the time it's just my gut saying like, like I'll go into the dugout after shaking a catcher a bunch and I'll be like, Hey dude, you put down the right call right there. But like my gut just told me I could execute this pitch better in that moment. Yep. It had nothing to do with anything other than me thinking I could throw a fastball down and away right there. Even yeah. though it was the wrong pitch, I just knew I could do it. Yeah. That's uh, man. And so you don't have a pitch calm on you, right? You're just, you're shaking off. Yeah, yeah. So I have it in my ear, but I'm not calling. Yeah, it. okay. But I once ha- you get roll again, like once I got rolling with our catchers this year, mm-hmm. like in in the first half it was hard because I wasn't executing at a high rate and I wasn't myself, and they're getting to know me and I'm getting to know them. Like there were times where I threw pitches when the the clock would get down to zero that I didn't even want to throw, but we just ran out of time with the mm-hmm. clock. But by the end, I mean we were just always on the same page like we just knew this is what's rolling from start to start this is what we're locked in with this is what i'm working on between starts like i would be completely ready with 10 seconds on the clock most of the time because we were so locked in fantastic all right so we are going to i let's see if i can do this very quickly i think i can uh add the stage beautiful all right no that is not the right one nope (laughs) i i can get this very quickly beautiful Sick. Now we've got it. All right. So we're going to talk about this game on the eighth. And this is an interesting game. Uh, when I asked you what game you wanted to do, you said, oh, we got to do this specific one on the eighth. Tell the people why you yeah. had to do this game against the Diamondbacks. Yeah. So I had a pretty bad cold around this point in the year. And I this was a Friday day game, which, by the way, Friday day games at Wrigley are the absolute best. The fans are just such a vibe. There's a buzz. It's so awesome. Hmm. But I woke up that day. I was sitting at my bar at home having a coffee, and I sneezed or coughed. And I threw out my, like, rib cage, my left side of my rib cage. So, like, my thoracic rib cage, like, really yeah. bad. Oh I was God. showering right after, and I, like, literally couldn't move my glove side at all. <laughs> I'm in the shower, like – feeling this and i'm like dude i literally locked it up so bad that i couldn't like rotate at all i'm on the way to the field and it hurt so bad that i was like sweating in the car i called our trainer and i was like hey dude i'm five minutes out i need help like i don't know if i can go today i need you guys to put me together and fix me this is not right so literally like i when i get to a field for a 120 game it's like okay 11 o'clock hot tub 11 15 stretch 11 30 weight room 
until 12, 12 o'clock, I start my plyos and movement at 1230. I walk out. Like I have this whole regiment. Like yeah. we need to go over the hitters at 10 AM every time this one, I did none of that. I just straight up showed up and was like on the training table doing drills and exercises and getting treatment for the whole day. We didn't even meet about the hitters. Like, Oh my I didn't, God. I honestly don't even know if I knew the lineup. Like I wasn't working. <laughs> on, I was just focused on being able to pitch this day. Um, and I'll I, like, it hurt when I was out there still, but like adrenaline's a crazy thing. And I got out there and was like, I'm fine. Here we, and they, they like, they even made me test it in the weight room. Like I had to throw plyo balls to make sure I was good. And, um, yeah, so I'm out here right now, even on the first pitch, I'm like, I think I'm good, but let's just, well, let's didn't go. you Didn't you say that, Hey, just in case have someone ready. Yeah. And to me, like, it's also such an interesting thing. And this is such a good reminder to myself that like, it's great to have a routine. It's great to prepare, but when it comes down to it, like just going out and competing is the best thing you can do. Absolutely. And some of the best players I've played with do that. Like, yes, they have their routine, but they're not so strict with it to where it ruins their day. If they miss their meeting or they miss, you know, the hot tub, they're, they're just going to compete when the lights are on at their best. Right. And that that's literally what I did this day. I just went out there and said, I'm just going to let it rip. I don't know this how is... long I'm going. I don't know how many pitches I got. Let's just go. This was an incredible performance. I mean, it was six innings. Uh, I'm going to spoil it, everyone. Uh, six innings, zero runs, one hit, uh, one walk, nine strikeouts, 77 pitches. And you're saying that you should just, you know, uh, sneeze and throw out your, uh, I guess, your rib cage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was like my day. left kind of like thoracic rib cage. I literally couldn't rotate. Like I couldn't move my glove arm at all. But yeah, it, it, like, again, it's just a good reminder to me that when it comes down to it, everything matters over the course of a career and people who prepare the right way are going to stick around and have success. But like, this was a good reminder to me that just go out, let it all hang out, be competitive and just like use, use my strengths. I didn't know the lineup. It's like, right. find out what your eyes are telling you, react and be aggressive, pitch to pitch. Like, this was a good, I didn't overthink anything. I was just yeah. like trying to survive out there. And, and really the most important question is what coffee was that in the morning? Uh, I make, so I mean, I honestly don't remember, but I, I make uh, coffee on something called a mocha master every morning. It's okay. like a pot of coffee, but has multiple drip points and it tastes like a pour over. So that's like, oh, man. I've got all my friends on it. People are like, I've gifted it to people for holidays and stuff. It's, it's a great coffee. I just started getting into bean, like whole bean coffee and actually oh, grinding yeah. it. And so I, I was the Folgers man for a oh, while, Jameson. Oh. It was so quick and easy to do. I needed those two minutes. Like once you're dialed done. in, you know, with like craft coffee and stuff, like my coffee in the morning takes five minutes, if that. And I love the process. Yeah. Like, I weigh my beans. Not every, it's not for everyone, but you got to mm. use filtered water. I weigh my beans. I have like a proper burr grinder. Like it's sure. It's just for me, it's therapeutic to just go of through. Of course, I, I get it. It's One day I will be like this, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I, it starts slow. You got to start somewhere. And then over time, you'll be like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna get a new grinder. I'm gonna treat myself to a new a new grinder. Like I'm gonna try these beans this one time, and then it's just yep. over. Then you're yeah. then you're done. Yeah, I, I'm kind of there. I'm getting there. All right, but more important things. It's the first pitch of the game here. And are you someone that will not throw a fastball at times? First pitch of the ball game is it always a heater for you? Most of the time, it's a heater, but I'm not afraid to throw like a first pitch cutter. I'm I think I did it to like. Acuna, like Corbin Carroll would be a guy where I would yeah. not be afraid to throw like a first pitch curveball or something. Right. Uh, for me, I'm a strike thrower, so I don't ever want to fall behind, but I'd rather fall behind 1-0 on a curveball in the dirt than get ambushed by someone. You know? Absolutely. So let's so get to it. To uh, Corbin Carroll's up again. It's a lefty, so if you remember, and guys. And look, he's swinging first pitch of 93 up and away. So. Uh, and then you follow that with a curveball down so which makes sense he's aggressive on the fastball he wants a fastball on it you wanted to serve him something different yeah and it's tricky with these really good players it's like did you swing and miss because that pitch was good did you swing and miss because you just didn't see it like yeah there's certain hitters where you get a swing and miss and you're like i'm doubling up until you show me you can hit that with a guy right. like this that's not always it's not to say i'll never double up but it's like just because i got a swing and miss up there on a fastball doesn't mean i'm just gonna throw five straight Right. Yeah, I call that the Mookie Betts rule. Yeah. yeah. Is some guys trying to double up and it's like, no, no, Betts is going to adjust to this and then yeah. hit it. And, and you that's not everyone. That's like the it. special players, you know, and that like Corbin's one of those guys. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Makes sense to go with the curveball. You missed that one down, and I assume this was actually supposed to be in the zone, uh, maybe a backdoor one. Is that right? Yeah. Later in the year, I was trying to backdoor my curveball a lot, but like, to be completely honest, I wish I threw that curveball I just threw more last year. Like mm, the one that's down and in at the ankles. Yeah, and, it, and it's a ball, but like, there's to me, there's purpose to that. Like making hitters say no. Like, like there's value in a hitter because hitters are always yes, 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 yes. And then like to make them be like, no, 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 no. Like to me, there's value in that. And again, for like the better players who are very smart and like try to think along with you for them to be like, okay, he can bounce his curveball. He can make me chase. Right. Like, don't chase. Like for the, the ability to make guys say no to that is important. And yeah. I didn't do that enough this year. And like, yeah. again, I'm a strike thrower. I can get back in the zone. Like, I don't have to be afraid to bounce a curveball every once in a while. Right. I used to, you know, I think the Pirates a bit you did, um, like 2019 Tyone. I think you were doing that, but also I think you adapted the slider then to do that for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, I, I, is there any hope that the sweeper? Shots. Yeah. Is there any hope that the sweeper can be that uh, moving forward? Yeah, definitely. I, I felt like it started becoming that later in the year. Um, mm -hmm. I start right before this, actually, I think in Colorado, I feel like I really took a step forward with my sweeper and was like sure. throwing it harder. Instead of it being 78, it was 82. And then like from here on out to the end of the year, this was early September. Yeah. I do feel like the sweeper started becoming that like a pitch that I could have enough confidence in to like throw aggressively and, you know, try to get chase on and stuff. But specifically to lefties though, because I think you only, you're saying you only threw about three of them to lefties this year. Yeah. To lefties. I, I mean, I think it could be, but to me, like ideally I just get the curveball going again. Sure. No, of course. Because yeah. like, a sweeper to a lefty, they might just say no out of the hand. Yeah, no, pass. right. That's, that's harder to get. If um, I'm throwing my good curveball, like the ability for it to like truly start as a strike for a long time and end right. as a ball to me holds more value. And like to I, a righty, a sweeper does that. Like it starts in and goes out. So I agree with you. When it comes to sweepers, it's better used like Chris Sales of uh, backdoor strikes easy. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and that curveball, I mean, really, it's the gyro slider that works uh, opposite handedness, mm -hmm. um, like the Cole Reagan's one, which is just stolen my heart. Yeah. Um, but I, this year. that dude's good. Oh, he's so good. You have no idea how much yeah. I love that man. I don't have my Cole Reagan's mug with me, but uh, <laughs> and we had a fun, we had a fun Friday at Wrigley, also, me versus him. That was a good one, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that one. Oh, man. I uh, absolutely okay, cool. So, so it's one one here against uh, Carmen Carroll. Just want the curveball down. I would imagine this would go back to a heater or a cutter. I uh, mean, no. That was a four seamer, not a sinker. It's kind of hard to see with the angle, but does yeah, look like that's a, a that was a yeah. four. Not I can just tell right there. Not my best four seam shape, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was definitely trying to just get back in the zone. One one's a big count. You want to win one one to go one two versus two one. Obviously, that's a big swing, but right again, just kind of pitching to the edges. I knew he was aggressive on the first fastball of the game, so. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking more east-west with that four-seamer as opposed to the north-south, right? Yeah, right in that situation I was. Like, I'm just trying to get it away for a clean strike. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, so 2-1, I mean, weather. this is kind of the telling pitch. It'd probably cut her back door. Uh, I know another fastball uh, missing upstairs. And, you know, that, that cutter that you move from being inside to being away and being that it's a surprise strike pitch, uh, is that something you would throw in a 2-1 count in that case to try and get back into it? It definitely is. Maybe not as much like first batter of the game, but it yeah, definitely sure. it definitely is a pitch that I like to do that with. Yeah. Are you are you thinking about saving things, uh, or like Gallon for example is like th okay, I gotta throw like a closer. I want everything yeah. out there in the first inning. Yeah, I'm not necessarily thinking about saving things, but it's also mm -hmm. like, you know, I haven't thrown a cutter yet, so I'm like I I try to find good situations early in a game to throw all my pitches. I just try to pick my spots to where like love that. Yeah, like two one going to three one. I don't know. I'd kick myself if I went three one, not on like one of my best pitches. That makes um, sense. But I do I do agree. Like I like picking spots to be like, you know what? And and again, just talking through it, this is something I'd like to do more this year. Is like if I'm oh one on a guy who's super aggressive, maybe I just take a shot bouncing a curveball. And then when I'm facing Corbin Carroll later in the game and it's oh two. I've already bounced a curveball today. Yeah, I've exactly. Already done that. I've already, I have that release point. I have that idea. Like, I think that's just, I think really the, the best 
pitchers do do that type of stuff. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's another like next step for me. Yeah. It's uh, you know, I would always consider really like the second or third innings of games yeah. as the fun one, because that's when I get the bottom of the lineup and then I get to figure out the things that I'm yeah. lacking that day. So it's like the yep. eighth hitter. So one Cal McCool, I can experiment to see if I have my change up right now yep. or the curveball game there. Right. Uh, it's always like to me, always the second and third innings of games. I'm like, oh, cool. This is like the experimental moment. Yeah. And yep. then uh, then we get back into it in the fourth, you know, so. Uh, yeah. So three one, you're you don't walk next. You don't do this. GMO. So this has got to be fastball in there, Swing and it is. And you can see that Carroll again can't barrel this. Yeah, uh, I actually do think I end up walking him here, but <laughs> this um, is the one walk you have this entire game. Yeah, is the first I do time. walk him, and then he steals second, and third. I'm just gonna give it away. But <laughs> um, yeah, like for me right here, I'm sold out into strike mode. Yeah, and, like. Like, I'm not going for a swing and miss there. I'm literally, like, first batter of the game, 3-1. Let's get it in the zone. Um, and that looked very similar to a fastball I threw earlier in the count. So that's kind of just a similar pitch and idea. Right. Uh, all right, so you're going to walk him. I'm bat. assuming it's going to be a four-seamer. It's close, yeah. Oh, and that's pitch not. And oh, then on. misses. Yeah. It. Are you so looking like forward right to the, uh, the pitch, the, sorry, the, uh, the, um, the challenge system that's coming? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right there. He's set up away, but I'm like. I didn't mean to throw it down and in, but I'm right. uh, thinking I'm thinking bigger area, like let's yeah, just of course. A big part of the plate and try it for a strike. Ball. Oh man. So a lot of the, for a lot of guys, um, I, I mentioned this where uh the first batter of the or the first time you have a base runner, there's sometimes some uh you gotta get comfortable with the stretch at times. You can practice it in between innings and stuff, but do you find that you sometimes struggle from the stretch initially? Yeah, and I mean, I've never been great at holding runners on first. It's something I work at and I try hard at, but it's never been like a super strong point. So with Corbin on first here, I know he's super fast. and He's at like 50 stolen bases here at this point of the year. So yeah. like that alone right there does tend to make guys speed up. Like that'll make me try to be quicker and maybe not be my best version of myself. And I mean, I'm just going to spoil it, but you'll see as this inning goes like, he gets on second. I think we throw it away. He goes to third, but then I end up getting out of it. And it's like my delivery with a guy on third is so much better than with a guy on first oh, when sure. it comes to fast guys. Like yeah. I'm talking like someone who's, you know, there's one on every team and it's like that super fast guy. Not saying I'd rather him be on third because that's stupid, but like my delivery is better with a guy on third. Well, I mean, Kenley Jansen would balk, right? Yeah. yeah I just know like I'm, not going to be my best to myself right here. <laughs> so, okay. So the rule of thumb, I mean, generally, I mean, I'll probably talk about it when he gets to second base or actually really third base, but the first time a guy is on is in scoring position, you don't throw a fastball. And this is Kettle Marte. You just walked, I uh, walked Corbin Carroll. Is there something about your approach now that you want to focus on after walking Carroll? Um, yeah. So I think right there, I, showed a few different sprays of the not sprays but like the four seam shape felt a little weird right there like i threw mm -hmm. one that kind of ran more i threw one like yeah pretty the one that was up felt i remember that feeling really crisp and i was like i'd like to bring out that shape more right um and then the one that i walked him on i kind of looked like i just wanted to throw a strike versus like yeah. really driving it so right here this still isn't like one of my best bat at bats but i'm thinking in my head i'm like I want to really like step foot on the foot in the ground and like really step through it versus right. kind of like trying to be so fine. I love what you were just talking about here because what's not talked about enough is really what the mental process is to execute. We say, yeah. cool, make the adjustment. And then internally you have to figure out what that adjustment is. Where should yeah. your mind go to make it? And even, you know, I don't know if everyone just saw what Tyone was doing, but how you talked about coming around it and actually yeah. You focus so in your mind about your hand going this way versus being behind it. That's something I do. Like what you were just saying, like sometimes when I'm in like sold out to throw in a strike, I, which is funny because I don't need to ever be sold out to throw. Like I know how to throw <laughs> strikes. It's like, I get a little timid and you can just see sometimes I'll try to like place it in there and like yeah. my best command and pitch shapes. Like my best version of myself is when I'm just super aggressive, throwing through a big, nice area and like really getting behind right. it and driving it versus like, trying to be a command guy like the command yeah. for me just happens when i'm like moving freely moving athletically and just kind of like flowing yeah 
Well, just think of us, you know, we're just going to say to you, Hey, drive it. Okay. You know, yeah. and next time you're in a jam, all of us here on chat are going to be like, Hey, drive it. It's okay. Just drive it. Yeah, step yeah, on it's it, fine. Drive it. Let's drive it. It's that easy. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, again, just that. Uh, and, and when you think about your four seamer, you're saying that to throw the four seamer that you want, it's about making sure that your wrist is behind the ball as yep. you're throwing it. And you, what were you saying about your uh, lower half? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the lower half correlates to like arm pass. So when my lower half sure. gets a little sloppy, my arm path will get a little long. And that's when like, I might not be, I might be behind the ball, but I'm not like ever getting back over the top of the ball. I'm mm -hmm. just stuck kind of behind it versus like getting in a good position to where I can like drive it down. So yeah. um, out of the stretch here, you can see with my backside, I'm like kind of presetting a little bit of tension into my glute right there. Mm -hmm. um, and that helps me just take kind of, so earlier in the year, I was like a little too linear. Like I was opening up early. I wasn't getting counter rotation. So here, like at this point in the year, me and Tommy and Moscow, so our assistant pitching coach, like we had gotten to a really good place with some of our like delivery cues and drill work and med ball work and weight room stuff to where like, I love this set position. This looks strong. I'm like putting a little tension into my backside. And now all I have to think about is just moving athletically. Right. Yeah. I love that. That's great. All right. So here we are with Kel Marte. We start him off and that's a heater at 93. Off. And there's two thoughts that go through my head here. One is you made a mistake and it's got to be, oh, no, it feels bad. But two, he didn't damage it. And that feels really good. Yeah. Yeah. So right there, like I never try to throw a fastball down the middle. Right. Ever, unless it's like three, two and we're up 10 or, you know, whatever. Sure. But I, I'm really never trying to throw this guy a fastball down the middle. Um, but at the same time, after a walk, like I would rather miss aggressively than tentatively. Mm -hmm. So I'm not happy with that. But I'm also like, you know what? He missed it. And in my head, a lot of the times, this is just like how delusional we can be. Sometimes I'm like, that's your one mistake. You missed it. it it's over. Now. You know, like, I tell myself, <laughs> like you got your mistake. Oh, oh, you missed it. Now I right. need to do my thing. So I'm a huge guy about um, about reading hitters. I think it's kind of the lost art of sequencing a bit where um, too much it turns into just the, the pregame of of certain quadrants. You have to pitch to this. These are the strengths. And I'm very much of a meld of the two of saying, cool, we understand their swing decisions, what they're good at, what they're bad at, what my strengths are. And then in the moment, uh, we can figure out if what a guy is looking for pretty easily from what they swing and what yeah. they don't. Yeah, and, so like this right. game is interesting too because I'm throwing to Miguel Amaya, who's a rookie mm -hmm. catcher, great kid, like puts in the work. He's going to be so good. <laughs> but I have to remind him sometimes before games like, Hey, just because we meet before the game and we go over each hitter, that doesn't mean like we have to throw. Right. Stuff. We can go off script. And that's something that like me and Jan Gomes got pretty good at later in the year. It's like, sure. I know a fastball up is a really good pitch, but I don't have it today. So let's just get creative and let's wing it out here and improvise. Whereas like sometimes a younger catcher tends to be like, you know, this guy can't hit fastballs up. I'm going to keep calling it. So, um, it's just interesting. Me and Miggy started working really well together. Um, nice. And that comes from like dugout conversations. That's on me and the pitching coaches to sit him down and be like, Hey, this feels good. This doesn't, here's what I want to like, if you see a count to bounce a curveball, let's try to do that. Like just more communication. Whereas with Jan Gomes, and the he might be coming up to me. He's like, Hey, let's find a count to bounce a curveball. Let's find a count yeah. to try to get your fastball up going like all that type of stuff. So just interesting here, like me and Miggy, this is, we had worked together a good bit as the year got on, we got pretty locked in together. Mm -hmm. um, and the start's like an awesome example of that. Yeah. I mean, so, so right. So like Marte does this and you're thinking the negative side, I'm going to be the optimist for you. I, uh, what I see is not that Marte, oh, didn't take advantage of a mistake. Like, oh man, he's going to take advantage of the next one. What I see is a hitter who normally would have taken advantage of that mistake and he didn't. And what's the reason for that? Normally, it's because he was probably looking for something off speed there and yep. then saw a pitch right down the middle and was, oh, man, I have to swing at this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And hitters will think like that sometimes. You know, he might be thinking, oh, he threw three fastballs for a ball right there in that count. Maybe he'll try to land a curve right. or whatever. So, and they yeah. know our tendency. I don't know off the top of my head, but like, he might know, like, he likes throwing lefties a first pitch breaking ball after a sure. walk or whatever. Like those stats right. exist. Oh man. That's so fun. Um, All right. So after seeing that, I'm wondering if you're going to go back to his heater here yep. because he didn't take you advantage of that one. 
And you threw the cutter right. that was supposed to be back door. Yeah. It did land yeah. up top, but Marte is just having a tough, tough job against you here. Uh, that's generally a hittable one. And I think what you were describing before with the, your cutter earlier in the year, that is the kind of pitch that would see the right field bleachers. But there, yeah. Marte just fouls it off. The cutter is a weird pitch because like right there, I actually didn't hate that shape of it. Right. Like sometimes the one that gets really hammered is the one that's like high vert, low horizontal. And like yep. that cutter to me right there looked like the right shape. It's yeah. just a really bad area. So again, like right there, I'm telling myself like, okay, I liked the feel of that. Now let's get it to the right spot. And sure. again, like I'm well aware right there that I didn't want that pitch to go there, but I'm thinking like I can work with this pitch. Like that felt nice. Yeah, that looked like it. Honestly, what Kyle Bradish's four seamer should be. <laughs> yeah, which is it's a super cut and everything. I'm like, oh, that's the one. Um, and yeah, that that kind of shape can actually turn into that inside pitch that you've always wanted. I mean, that's great. And I could not agree more. The the small dip cutters, I cannot stand. Yeah, those are not for me in the slightest. That's when it's just like, why not just throw a fastball? Yeah, if you have a good heater. Exactly right. If you're throwing that upstairs, and well, then you should be trying to miss it above the bat, not below it. And the, yeah. that dip cutter just helps the hitter. Yep. So not fun stuff there. But I see you're setting up a way here for the O2 pitch. Carol not going. And so and you're trying to do the, the curveball there. Left. I have a quick question about that. So are you the kind of pitcher who wants to see the glove where you start the pitch or where you end it? So normally it's where I end it. But right there, he's set up a way just because – Again, like halfway through the year, we just found like my best curveball shapes came when I thought backdoor. Mm. So like right there, I'm not trying to just backdoor that curveball, but like for whatever reason, I would get a little more depth, a little less horizontal when I would yeah. think like that away lane. Maybe it's your brain's a crazy thing, but like, I don't know why it could be because I see him over there and I say like, I got to keep my shoulder closed, hide behind it, sure. like get it to that spot versus if he's down and in and like flashing the glove, maybe I come off early and try to rip it to that spot. So like that right there is again, just something that me and the coaches and the catchers figured out. Like my curveball does better. And like the miss over there is better. It's like, I'm either going to miss yeah. off the plate or miss down. Sometimes when you're set up like down, down and in, it's like, well, the miss is like down and in, in the nitro zone. So right. there's a few reasons, but like really the main reason for that is just like the delivery cue in my head. It, it's weird. I dig it. Uh, and it's only for the curveball you're saying. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so like the cutter, you want to land in the glove or you want it to be where it starts? I normally just, I'm weird. I really don't have crazy sights. Like, I'm, I'm sure I subconsciously do, but I have like <laughs> feels. So like with my, when I'm at my absolute best, like with my curveball, I have like a strike feel and I have like mm -hmm. a bounce feel. And I just know, like I'm not looking at any, I just know like with my curveball, this is like, I feel it off my middle finger, kind of yeah. a little further back. And then with my bounce one, I just feel a little more aggressive out front. Right. Um, I have kind of like just the feels and then with the fastball, I throw to the glove, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm glove. It's the most satisfying guy. thing in the world. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. When I, you know, when I was um, in high school, my whole thing was the curveball. That was like the pitch that I had. And I, uh, I remember doing so many drills of the glove on the ground facing up. Right. Yep. Um, and going straight into it. And I, I threw a curveball. I don't know how actually what your mentality of it is. For me, it's I'm thinking a fastball. And then essentially right when I get to my shoulder, it's a karate chop. Uh, the pinky yep. goes down to my left ankle. Um, and for me, that was so easy to uh, to essentially adapt from there. Because I'm just thinking I, I see the glove on the ground and I, I had to go into it. So I'm thinking, cool, I'm thinking outside corner, essentially, actually, even like the front shoulder of the of the hitter I'm going for yeah. uh, mentally. And that, to me, always kept me straight on it. And the second that I in any way tried to think uh, away or, um, you know, toward the left hander, I would always wrap my arm around it. I would yeah. always come around this way as opposed to angling my arm Yeah, uh, me, and that way and that I could never do that. I have like I really I throw like a semi spike curve. And Mm -hmm. When I have a leverage, a seam with that middle finger there. And I really just think of like, I guess a karate chop, but I, to it's me, like my feels so different, but I literally just think of like, yeah, I almost wrap and like hook my, my wrist the whole way. And it's just mm -hmm. like, that's like yeah. kind of my delivery cues. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, cool. So, so that was uh, an O2 curveball in the cool. dirt. 
Uh, to Marte. I'm kind of tempted to throw it twice. I call it the gambit. One, two, missing. Uh, there is two a lot of guys. I didn't want to throw it there, but like that's what we were talking about. Like the yeah. miss when you try to go away, to me is much safer than another miss. So like you saw the one before. I did get him to say no, and like he took it down. Um, and then right there, I was just doubling up on a curveball. I ideally right there would have thrown it like one ball under the zone and like maybe or two balls under the zone and like a little shaded away. That one just kind of wrapped, but it's a fine miss. It was relatively competitive. Right. You just move on. Yeah. No, I love that he went for it too, because I, I, again, I call it the gambit where guy, a lot of hitters will say, okay, cool. I took a fastball. I'm sorry. I took a breaking ball. Now I'll get the fastball back. Yeah. I I talk to our hitters all the time about that kind of stuff. It's like, just because they swing and miss at one doesn't mean they're not going to crush the next. And just because they take yeah. one doesn't mean they won't swing and miss at the very next one. Like, yeah, exactly. Dude, we're humans. Like, it's not yeah. like, oh, he <laughs> took that. He will not swing at a curveball in the dirt. It's like, dude, no. Nope. every pitch is different. Every pitch has a different life. Like, dude. Right. So. You can also see how they follow it, too. If they followed yep. the previous one, then that says, okay, the, from the get-go, before you even threw it, they were thinking that. Yep. Balls. Uh, so here is 2-2. Two, two. Uh, he threw two curveballs, and he's trying to go upstairs with the heater, the and there's the uh, the play to center and that had Carroll steal second and then third. third. So and you get out of this. Swanson, yeah, he yeah. lost his glove. So that fastball up right there is kind of what I'm talking so about. Like, it'll be a... I didn't hate that life and that shape, but it was yeah. like just not competitive enough, and I did that right. a lot this year to let these. Like, you're not going to get hurt on that pitch right there, but it's like that didn't, really didn't do much. For yeah, me. sure. I threw a curveball right here, and this is where I started kind of feeling myself. Like, he took a fastball up. I end up kind of just tunneling it off of that line. Yeah. I land a curveball. It's not the nastiest curveball I've ever thrown, but, like, just the fact that I land a 3-2 curveball here, I'm like, okay, now we get going. Yeah, absolutely. So and third, I like it, taking advantage of Here's a mistake a to, Swing uh, and a miss. Struck him to make out. it work, right? That was not yeah, a fastball man. that you wanted to hit, but then using that, Two you're more. able to throw that. That curveball that honestly, if that was the 0-2 pitch, you would not be happy with. But because it's a right. 3-2, after that four-seamer, he's thinking it's going to be a fastball because yep. it's a 3-2 pitch. And to he execute that, is not a big deal. Guy. Like, yeah. He's thinking all of that. I'm thinking, like, I don't want to walk another guy, but I do have a righty on deck. And, like, I can find a way to get out of this. Like, I do have a base open. I'm Right. I wanted to throw a strike there. I didn't want to walk him. But I'm also, like, I'm not going to just groove him with fastball right here. So. Yeah, of course. So I'm There's curious if this night, is a, a sweeper right here. Center. That is, I think it's a weird angle. Yeah, that's a sweeper. One? And yeah, okay. I think Fam, the night before, yeah, the night before hit like two or three homers. And I think they were on fastballs. Uh-huh. So I just like, he in the past has had some pretty good success off me. And in this game, I'm like, I'm just not going to throw him any fastballs. Right. That's not to say next time I face like next time I might throw them all sinkers in or whatever. But like this game, I was like, dude, he was all over Assad's uh, fastball the night before. Like, I'm just not. I'm gonna make him beat me on something else. Yeah, sure. Um, there's also scoring course, position the, here. The so, common, like, right? Exactly. The common theory is scoring position. You don't want to give him a fastball to put into the outfield um, that at least scores a run. Sweeper. You know, you can work around this a lot. Even if you walk him, yep. it can be a double play. You have a great Cubs defense. Which, yep. by the way, that sinker is even better because of that defense behind you. So, no doubt. Um, I, love, I love that thought, too. Not in their order. Uh, and it's even fun to even throw a sinker there first pitch to try and get an aggressive fam. But honestly, you don't really want to risk that with the yeah. man. The if, if he hadn't hit the homers, then I'd That's a strike. Right. That's, That's an 84 mile per hour. Man, it's That's so a weird. Good. It's a cutter? That's what I started. Obviously, not the greatest location, but. I started trying to throw my cutter to righties more similarly to my gyro slider in the past. Got it. So, um, cause you have a different shape than with a sweeper and then the cutter. Yeah. Right. So that's very similar to my older slider in a perfect world. Like it's that shape, but it's down the in their order. 687. And you'll see that. Oh, sure. Right. Yeah. That's a strike. That makes, so, like, makes all sense. Also. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> it's what I used to call the uh, the cannibal McSanchez, which is Anibal Sanchez and a uh, column Q made a living of those kinds of cutters upstairs where he's thinking that's a heater out of the zone upstairs. And then it comes yep. back down and get a cold strike. And he, Tommy fam is a veteran hitter. Like he knows this guy. Right. 
And there it is. That's and the better one. Eh? You that's down, like right. literally a cutter old slider hybrid. Right. And that's that's if I effective. Could package that pitch up. Yeah. That's what I want right there. Right. That that's I mean, when you have uh, also if you have that sinker inside, you have the four seam that can't stay upstairs. That yep. can be a big nullifier, but cool. I needed a strike and I got one. Um, to me, I'm all about the sweeper at this point, but uh, it would be so fun seeing like a 95 mile per hour heater up yeah. and in at this point. I think we go sweeper. You can uh, it's got to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that is, that is lower than I, I mean, are you thinking more east west or north south on that sweeper? Generally east west, but I see yeah. him pointing down there and I feel like that is him telling me like, open again open base ahead in the count be really right. safe with this let's see if we can get him fishing like so that right there i'm like super happy with that mess i did like mm -hmm. yes i normally do think east west with my sweeper try to start it right, right where i landed that cutter before yep and just run it off of that sure um but he's pointing down there and i'm like you right know what? i'm gonna take a shot let's just now take a shot. going going south like that though i would you normally go with the curveball with that instead of the sweeper yeah, um, but I really didn't throw that many curveballs to righties this year. I yeah, could throw. I could throw it more. I don't know. I uh, yeah, it's, it's a thought of like if you're trying to miss underneath in the dirt. Yeah, the sweeper wouldn't be too competitive, right? I mean, maybe maybe yours has a little bit more depth than the average one. I gotta know that. I should know that. Uh, I, I didn't do my homework, Jameson. Two two. Uh, and then you get one more cutter upstairs um, to beat Fam. And yeah, you really said it. Like you were just not going to give him a fastball, and he yeah. was looking for one the entire time. Yeah, it's just I was stubborn. Is the it. infield backs we, up? Good job. Pitch to Walker. <laughs> yeah, it's swing. Uh, so there is that fastball away uh, to Christian Walker. I mean, you get a whiff on that one. I uh, and is, is there was there a certain report on Walker about that fastball away? Was it? I don't remember. Um, I, yeah, I really don't remember what his scouting report was. Um, but runner on third here, I liked the way my delivery was feeling. He had just seen me throw six straight off speed pitches or whatever. Right. So I'm like, probably just thinking, let's just. Yeah, you know, that makes a ton of before. sense. And sometimes yeah. it's not that kind of like, sometimes I just could have felt good with that pitch at that time and just sure. ripped it. Is it, uh, and I don't think you've thrown a sinker yet this game, which is probably why instead yeah. of that. I don't think I, I threw many this game. Because sure. my cutter gets going to righties mm -hmm. pretty well, and I threw like a lot of like cutters, sweepers, and like some fastballs up. Gotcha. Because yeah, this would call for that sinker, I think. Yeah. In this game, especially a guy like Christian Walker might jump on it if you're thinking, "Hey, I want something faster now." Yeah. Uh, that would get you out of this in one pitch, possibly. Tie uh, I don't remember. Eighty-nine innings. Bad, so. I love those C's, by the way. I love, I love that look. Uh, <laughs> the right there's a curveball for a strike. Middle. Beautiful. Hey, and, and that's also one that isn't ideal. And you know that Christian Walker yeah. wasn't looking for that at that yeah. point. Yeah. So again, just easy. Like sometimes when you, when you watch a game, like I ended up having a great day here and like, as the middle innings get going, I got like, not to toot my own horn, but I was pretty good this day, but oh, like, you were great this day, <laughs> but early in the game, like my line could have been totally different if he hits that pitch. And You're right. And I, it's not like I would have been like, oh, shit, I got so unlucky. It's like, no, I hung a breaking ball, and he missed it. And sometimes, you know, there's a reason for it, and he was looking for something else. Sometimes he just didn't clip it. I don't, I Jameson mean, okay. uh, was not told beforehand that this is a family-friendly broadcast. Oh, yeah. uh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. Uh, but uh, but you see that 0-2 uh, – sorry, the 0-1 curveball, he misses that one. I mean, it's pretty easy. You throw two sweepers yeah. and you're out of this. Like that's uh, uh, in my head. It's, it's, it's third, two a fastball. Down, the two. Oh man! Jack so you go upstairs go. with it. No. Okay. So says I remember going back to the dugout. <laughs> but then I end up striking him out on a ball, looking so it the game knows that. Okay. Yeah, the ball don't lie. And a one two. Uh, right. So that that's the cutter that you were feeling, I think. Yeah. I don't. And he's set up so far off there that. Yeah. There was going to be a pull. Popped up foul. That's a good sweeper. Right, and that's the thing. I see a swing like that from Walker, and I've actually I've, I've talked to a couple of people about this. About oh man, he's on everything. Like he can't get anything past them. Like no, no, Walker is lucky to have survived. Yeah, like that's not a swing of oh I almost had it. It was oh whew, I can't believe I got that yeah. one. Yeah, that's him just in protect mode. That's a good hitter. Right, just trying Maybe. to not strike out. Exactly. Um, and and just get a little bit off more off the plate. Might be the put away pitch. It's done. Uh, oh, do you get that? Okay, hold on. I got that. <laughs> I need that. 
<laughs> so that's interesting. So that was a four seamer away, uh, down and away. And that was supposed to be like, cool, I just threw everything off of that and I'm going to freeze yeah. you on the thing down and away. Exactly. He took some breaking ball or he like fought the sweeper. I threw like a pretty far cutter, but again, like still just took a shot out of the zone. He said no to it right there. I'm like, let's just land one. But I also, at the same time, I'm thinking like, I've gotten this far in the sitting. I'm almost out of it. Don't just give in and pump it here, right. de- like over the plate. So that's kind of the game of like, right there. I remember thinking like, I'm so close to getting out of this. Do not give in. And I ended up getting a call, but like, I would have been fine if that went three, two, two, like yeah. I would have been totally okay with that. That would have been a sweeper then. Yeah. Three, two. 100%. Yeah. Good. Good. We need, I'm trying to start a movement of stop throwing fastballs and three, two counts in the first one. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's so much case, more effective. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> unbelievable. All right, cool. So second inning, inning easy. Yeah, you need to allow that guy uh, to Virginia, score. Oh, yeah. That's lit, get fam. into a groove here. You throw a, a first pitch fastball. When that happens, again, you're just thinking drive it, right? You just got to drive okay, it, yeah. Get, yep. I got a little loose there. Maybe my tempo is a little slow. Arm got a little mm-hmm. long, and it just sprayed. It, is it happens. Hotter than a depot stove. Come back, and you throw a fastball in there. Cool. This is fine. Everything yep. is good. It was passive on that. The one long. Right. And you throw a curveball that oh, you wanted to so badly, and he did. Okay, so you see that. There's no way you throw a yeah. fastball after that, right? I think I throw another curveball. You got it. I mean, I don't think it's a great one, but but even he's swinging at that, and it's yeah. just you got to keep going after it. I think he grounds out to second here on a curveball eventually, but it's like I never hit. threw that good one. One two. Mm. On the ground I mean, corner is there. So that's the thing, Couples though. When you see that kind of half swing on one. It's less about like, oh man, I need to throw that perfect one again. It's like, no, he's not at all prepared for this. Yeah. So like to that specific hitter in that moment, it's like the curveball was the right pitch. A lot of, a lot of the time I'm all about execution over the right pitch, execution over stuff even. And Mm -hmm. it's like in this moment, curveball was the right pitch. Right. And like, I was just going to keep throwing it. Even if it wasn't the best one. Yeah. Just. And even th- even swing so poorly at that eighty one yeah. the previous pitch One-off. too is just like yeah okay. Having them- I mean that's the thing is you reading that in the moment is so massive. Yeah, it's such a huge game changer from a lot of people. It's just like well this is what the book is. I gotta uh, it's what we prepare beforehand. We gotta just follow right. this. Like no, he gives you so much information and you follow yep. it and you got an easy out. Yep. That's that's exactly Try right. Try to bite and- on something because he looks. He says, look, my problem isn't throwing strikes. I can. Yeah. Um, so there's 94 down and away. Uh, and sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off on what you were going to no, mention there. No, I mean, I remember this is where I started feeling pretty good right here. Like <laughs> that's a miss, but that pitch right there, like that felt yeah. driven, that felt good. I kind of remember like this is where I started picking up a little momentum. Right. Yeah. I, like, I, I, to start the game, I was like, you know, with my back and everything, I was kind of yeah. just feeling my way into it. And then like, here's where I'm kind of just, I black out, like start. <laughs> executing pitches at a high rate like my stuff sure. ticks up a little bit yeah um I, I always frame it as either you're pitching you feel like you're pitching uphill or downhill yeah and there's like a feeling of like i'm not i'm always going uphill here into the and zone. You're yeah. downhill, oh man this For is town. The and town ever. has said it himself this season hasn't gone the way that he had oh, hoped or wanted cutter. as you get a just little oh, that's roller the, there that Amaya really jumps on. on. Yeah. But this is an opportunity for him to step up, finish late. And that's, I mean, it's it's what's interesting is you don't normally see cutters as low pitches. Um, you know, see them either as inside um, to same or to opposite handedness, or you see them kind of uh, more just, I don't know, I don't know, really just kind of around the zone. But you yeah. don't really see them get those weak grounders like that. Yeah, and for and, me, like with my command when I'm right, when I'm good, it's like in a perfect, b- beautiful world, do a righty, I can dot a four down and away. Yeah. I can dot a cutter down and away, and then I can throw a sweeper off of that. And then if I need, I have fastball up or sink right. in. But like, right, right, right. I love the down and away cutter sweeper yeah, man. combo. Like I start doing a pretty good, like even I throw the OO ball to him right there. And it's a mm-hmm. fastball down away, but it's close and it's competitive and it's driven. And then I land like a really nice cutter right there. And it's like, you just start getting doubt when you can like really be relentless with good pitches, with good shapes to good areas. And like you're making the decisions really tough. You know, you're throwing competitive balls, you're throwing enough strikes to make them respected. And it's like, that's kind of what happens. This game is like, I'm out of the zone when I start needing to be, I'm in the zone when I need to be. And then it starts mm-hmm. kind of like crisscrossing and, um, Oh, it's so good. 
I mean, yeah, even that miss on uh, away with that fastball sets up that cutter because he thinks it's just going to be another four seamer that you yep. tried to, you know, and a little more season. pristine with. You know, you can, you can and there you hit it again, and this is just oh man, that's I mean that's three straight just right there, uh, and you go back with that cutter. Of no. course you do. Why wouldn't you? That's, that's a good one. Like I'm happy with that. One one. Yeah, and then you throw in. Oh, that's a brilliant one. Um, just under the zone. I mean, arguably inside the zone there. Um, he gets a foul ball on it. And now you know that Moreno is looking down in a way, though, right? Yeah, this I, you know that's where his eye is. I also know he is a tough guy to strike out, like mm -hmm. just from watching video and stuff. Like he's he can put the ball in play. He's not just like a gimme strikeout guy with two strikes. So I remember thinking against him, I'm like, I just still want to stay competitive here. I don't want to get super crazy deep in account. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you. And uh, I mean, the 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 idealist in me is like, okay, this is the perfect 95 up and in pitch. Yep. Uh, I have no idea that's what you go with. Uh, but that would be so fun. The one, two. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, that makes me so happy. Oh, it's perfect. Yep. I mean, was that the mentality the entire way through, or was it just more middle up, or is it actually inside? To righties, I like the visual of like, up and away, middle up, and then like my miss will just be the aggressive up and in. Yeah. Um, and my it's weird. My best fastball shapes to righties are when the catcher's set up away and mm -hmm. I drive it through. Like it, it'll look like a miss, and you'll see a few this game. Sure. But like I throw one to Lawler later where it's like he was set up away, but like my idea is like I'm ripping this aggressive through the big area, and that's when it like really yeah takes off through the, through the catcher so oh, um to righties oh. i don't like seeing the visual super up and in because you see their face up there and like there's a human element of it like i, I, I get it dot this i can't let it go but when i see the bigger area it's like i can let yeah. it fly that makes a ton of sense uh it's why it's really hard to to be consistent up and in i think it's yeah. because the, the margin of error is so much smaller but man i mean that's the perfect pitch in this uh i mean that was so genuine for me yeah, uh, of excitement because right, that's what you do. You set him down away. You get three pitches of him. Is eye level uh, shifting? You see the uh, so he. You see him go after it and really lean into it. Yeah, and then you stand yeah. him up like that. Perfect. I walk off the mound here, being like, "Oh my gosh, give me the ball back." Yeah, Went to I'm third like, inning. All right, that, that was pretty good. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't get to do that as much as I, I would have liked this year, where I'm walking off and I'm like, "That's me at my best, right there." Yeah. That's what I need to be going forward. Like that's a good. That's it. Right, and uh, what's so interesting here too is there's something to be said about the the pauses in between innings. Um, the Cubs did you a few favors on the other side of this one. Uh, I think this was a one nothing game actually in favor of the Diamondbacks in the end. Gallon throws a complete game, yeah. Because you know it's it's Gallon. Uh, yeah. but uh, we are Gallon gals here. But um, yeah, he's really good. <laughs> he's incredible. But there's something to be said about the time spent in between innings as well. And do you find that it gets to you? But I mean, especially after this, you want that ball back right away. Uh, do you find that you yeah. get, you know, discombobulated a little bit from that? Yeah, I'll never get mad when a, our team hits for a while. But there are times where I'm like, you know, the flow of the game can get so disrupted when it's like, all right the two minute warm up period. And then you put together some offensive like long at bats and then maybe a mound visit from the catcher, then a mound visit from the pitching coach, then maybe a pitching change. And it's like, dude, you could be at 20 minutes break and you might not right. remember what that last inning felt like anymore. So I do like when a game is like a pitcher's duel, it's fun for me. Like just selfishly, I get to just stay right in the moment and stay in a yeah. good rhythm. Like this game I remember was very like, we were just on the same pace which is rare. Um, yeah. But obviously like I'll never complain about getting run support or, <laughs> you know, tiring another pitcher out or well, getting to the bullpen. But um, it, it, it is nice when you get in that rhythm. You know, it honestly, I, I don't know. I'm surprised I never thought about this before. I'm sure someone has mentioned it. Um, Jacob deGrom is well known for getting the worst run support ever and just making aces out of the, the opposing pitchers. But theoretically, I mean, he's giving them the, be the best rhythm, right? Yeah. He's getting a, uh, <laughs> He's getting them back on the mound exactly the amount of time that they want, yeah. right? And there's times where you need a break where you're like, you know, it's a hot day. You had a long inning. Like, there's times where you really want that game to slow yeah. down or you'll have a long inning and then they'll have a quick one on offense. You're like, shit, I got to get right back out there. And it's like, ah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, 
oh, you just figure it out. And there's ways if it's a long inning, you come out, you maybe get more aggressive with your warm up pitches to try to make sure you're sure. like ramping your body up. And if it's a quick inning, maybe I just lob my warm up pitches because I know I still have that same feeling. So yep. there's ways to kind of if it's a really long inning, I'll sprint to the mound just to get my heart rate back up. And if it's like a <laughs> really good. quick inning, I'll just kind of like jog out or like walk out just to not get overheated. Yeah, so. right, right. Uh, that's cool. I mean, right now you gotta wow. be thinking like I give the ball back, please. Yeah. yeah. There's no better feeling than what you just Pop had it. and you want it again. And great. What ground. do you know? You this start up again, you throw a beautiful cutter away. Uh, cutter. Young guy. I know he's probably can always handle velo and fastballs. So I'm just like, right. Cut. Right. <laughs> that that's you know, I remember actually Chris Bryant, um, I think it was against James Shields, it was his first ever at bat, and all he got was change ups inside. Like yep. he literally just got completely hosed from them. Yeah, and three yeah, weeks like, ago. You do. And he just stated uh, it. When you see that, when you see Perdomo right there, just showcase bunt first pitch. No, he's not. He's just trying to distract you in your head. Do you react differently to that? Uh, my delivery will sometimes change. Like I'll like rush off the mound or something. But I know he, I think, is a relatively patient guy. Um, mm -hmm. Or he had been recently at this stage. So I was like, you know what? No one on, one out already. I'm going to cut a big area of the plate right here. Regardless, like before he showed bunt, I was like, I'm just going to, get ahead being a good count uh, right so that was my thought there yeah the 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 lesson i always learned was uh you throw up and in if you can you don't want to hit them when they're trying to yeah. bunt, but it's just so hard to get the right barrel on the bat when it's like that there have been times i've certainly adjusted mid delivery because of that yeah i uh, fortunately you know, i only hit a guy once and it was in in, in any way like that and that was Another story I've, for another time. I've had to hit before too, so I know how hard bunting is. So if I see someone bunting, I'm like, God, like, you know, some of these younger guys have never faced an, another pitcher or like mm -hmm. faced someone bunting a lot. I'm like, dude, if someone's sack bunting, fastballs up are really hard to like get on the ground. Like that's a right. good way to get a pop up. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, there's there's little arts to when people are bunting. Matter of right factly, there, I'm trying to get ahead. Yeah, just me. Get he's not going to. Nico's got a stronger arm than I do. So he set that up for a curveball in there again, story. and that's great. I mean. I don't really think of this curveball as one that batters sit and drive a ton. Yeah. Um, especially lefties, like they take this all day against you. Yeah. And that was often a little bit of a heater, a little more up. So that's a nice right. little change there. And like, sure. Most. This is, this most is where the splitter comes in, right? This What's is that? it. This is where the splitter comes in. Yeah. I wish. This is it. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. So, we call that free real estate, by the way. If you throw a, a breaking ball for a strike in the first two pitches in that bat, Field two. Zone. They'll pretty much always take it. It's free real estate. We that's, see a lot of pitches. So you try to do the four seamer upstairs. Like, I yeah. want to pitch up more, but I just didn't do it as effectively as I would have liked. This sure. Year. Did you have a different mentality when it was in an 0-2 count like that? Like you're thinking, you're talking about before saying, if I miss, I want to miss out of the zone. Yeah, it's pretty that bad might have been mentality, but sometimes I'm like, don't get beat on this. You know, it's like sometimes mm -hmm. a fastball up, like the miss can be just over the heart of the plate. So I'm like, Sometimes I might have good reason of being like, let's be fine with this, you know, yeah. whatever. But like right there, that's such an uncompetitive miss. That's such a that's such a bad pitch. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it just... happens. It's all right. Be happy that it's such a bad pitch that's out of the yeah. zone. The one, two. And then of course you go back to the curveball. Swanson charging. Yeah. Bread and butter. Guys don't I like the, that I hard. liked my shape on the curveball this day. Don't yeah. It, so. Nice. So we're back to Carol now. And he still can't hit your fastball. Yeah, He's over three. One. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that obviously needs to feel good. Uh, you know, we were talking like the Mookie Betts rule. You don't throw that again. But it feels like now that's three times, you kind of can. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember what I throw here. I'm, I'm assuming it's another fastball. Oh, it's a backdoor cutter. Hit the ball out of the end. And if he is on that fastball, then that's exactly how you should you do it. You can tell the catcher was set up there. pretty far off there. So that, to me, tells me, let's be fine with this pitch. Like, mm. He doesn't want not me yet. to miss over the plate. Yeah. That right there tells me, like, if I miss, I'm either on the plate or off away. I'm not missing right. over the plate to this guy. Yeah, that's great. And also, you help him frame it easily, too. Yeah. Not options, to it. futures. Um, so, O2 here. Oh, no, wait. I missed, I missed the pitch here. O2. I... What would you say is your normal one right now without the splitter in this situation? Is it that curveball down or is it depends uh, on the day? Like, like I think yeah. right here I throw a curveball, but mm -hmm. to this point in the game, to righties I liked my heater up, to lefties I didn't as much. Yeah. So this is a nice little sequence here. Oh yes. <laughs> so it's like 
<laughs> the good four that he missed, yeah. and then a really nice place backdoor cutter, and then a curveball kind of off that same line where I, I felt like I showed him something that rode, something that came back, and then something that went down. That was yeah. a nice little pitch package and tunnel, um, especially for a day where I like probably didn't have my best fastball up to lefties. That's sure. a nice alternative. Oh, that's amazing. But uh, like you know, that can be a dangerous area to live. So it's like I just. I really dotted those pitches. So there, it's risky playing the away game to lefties. But when I was feeling like I did this day, like I can do it. Yeah. I mean, look at, look at this guy right now. This is, yeah, he's was, feeling great. He's feeling good. Uh, yeah. I may have had like, Carol, my, like stop, a, stop. a future game <laughs> or something where I was like feeling pretty good out there. You know? <laughs> great, uh, we, we head to the, uh, the fourth inning now and you're just, well, you just want to throw that same curveball you threw again. Yeah. Um, it feels that good. I, that one, I would imagine you're not trying to dot it. Like, of course, like he did before you're just yeah. trying to get on the zone. No, I got him to swing and miss at the curveball on the first at bat. So right. So that makes sense. Strike right there, but that's a good, that's a, that's a big baseball. And then you have the backdoor cutter working. I mean, this is really, you know, this is tying one one really against the lefties for the yeah, most part. You took that right. curveball. I'm thinking like, I can just throw something that starts on the same line and just yep. back it yeah, up. Get it back no over one's the that's not a pitch. Right. No, for me, I really so. like this cup of coffee. The uh, one, one. So you throw the cutter back door and you not throw. Uh, I, I think that was a change up. It was a change up. Yeah. What? You don't do yeah. that. I don't know why I threw it. I don't like, I don't remember if it was in the scouting report or what, but. I think I you wanted something to go out of the zone. That's why. Yeah. You wanted, you, you noticed, you obviously were thinking, cool. He's thinking off the plate back over. So I need yeah. something that looks like a mistake of that and comes off, and you executed it. No, for me, I really like this cup of Exactly coffee. what you want. It's a 1-1 one, one one pitch, starts over the plate, ends of off bounce. of it. Swanson. Um, good positioning, good defense. First. That's first. Good baseball. That's one out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like John Madden. That's me, awesome. Yeah. I love it. Uh, uh, so great. You have fam again. You're like, no fastballs, oh, right? Absolutely not. You've got that cutter that working least. beautifully. I mean, that's a good catch right there, but that was yeah. a good cutter. And then again, like this cutter shape, right here we call it a cutter but this really is looking yeah, more similar a, to my old slider right um and it's a pitch that i'm just comfortable in commanding and you know i have do the you, right delivery cue do you still have that now do you think yeah if, i mean this is this pitch right here is something that evolved throughout the year it started as a true cutter mm -hmm. and then it went more this shape to righties the other shape to lefties that's hard to do and then right. i really tried settling like on more of this shape and if this is the shape, then, then I mean, oh, I was just talking before, like lefties to righties, the gyro slider is the way to go. Yeah. Uh, is this something that you've considered going down and into lefties on? Yeah. So that's something we worked on in bullpens last year uh, towards the end. And I threw a few, um, but didn't break it out a ton. I mm -hmm. tried maybe a few to like a Nolan Jones or something like that. But like, yeah, it is something I, I want to work on in spring. And break that sounds out so more. fun. Um, but yeah, it's not something I did much last year. Yeah, I I, I love seeing right-handers execute that. I mean, I think the yeah, best pitchers in baseball zone, are the ones that can do it. Yeah, the dead zone gyro to a lefty. Zone. Yeah, or like underneath the nitro zone, right? Yep. Oh, like Degrom does that. Cole does that. Scherzer does it. With yep. Yeah. Oh man, that's what Kershaw made a living on. Yep. Um, the side, it's it's just so absurdly hard to hit. Talked about. Um, the only problem is you have to be so good to be able to look at that all the time. Uh, there's a first pitch uh, curveball here to um, uh, to fam. Sorry, that's the second pitch. After you dot that cutter down away, you throw another yep. breaking ball. And now, now is where you would have fun, though, right? Yeah. Now is the fastball upstairs again. I think He's... I throw a heater here. Okay. But I also like. I'm telling you, I was stubborn this day with like, I'm gonna throw him off speed <laughs> until. Like... He's a guy that doesn't throw it in the zone for you. Okay, there it right is. Now. There it is. And He's I'll be honest him. with you, like you had it. Yeah, uh, it was the right call. It just it, it leaked over a little bit too I'm much. Two balls too low right there. If I get that yeah. two balls higher, um, but like you That's talk about it's so small. Like, I get yeah. away with this mistake right here because I had thrown cutters in that location. I had thrown exactly. sweepers, curveballs. Like he hadn't seen a fastball yet. So right. I get away with that because that's the first heater he's seen. Like he's just probably not on that timing or, you know, or maybe I got lucky. I don't know, but <laughs> I, I like talking pitching and I like thinking through it. And I'm going to tell myself it's because I threw all off speed. There you go. I mean, it is. I mean, you see a swing.
Yeah. He's then completely he's behind on this. This is such a defensive swing for a pitch right that now. normally he's having, yeah. is is not that, right? Like seeing whenever I see, especially one down the middle, a fastball that goes opposite um fouled off uh opposite way, it's just no that you're not on this in the slightest. Yeah. It could uh, be too like hitters for the most part, a lot of hitters are always on fastball timing. Yeah. But like Man, if there's one sliver of doubt in a guy's mind that is that a cutter? Yeah, He's right. Not, like he might still be fastball timing, but it could just be that little bit of like, what is that right, right there? You know, and that well, that's because be of what you did, right? Yeah. Six, so I mean, see, nice do they there's a part of me that says, "Oh, I just try it one more time and get it better." Um, but honestly, just a sweeper. <laughs> uh, so you're trying that's, to do the cutter away. That's a harder one, and that right there is again what we talked about, like. I throw a lot of strikes. Right. I wanted to make sure right there. I took his eyes out there, got him to say no. And it looks not like a great pitch, like a good hitter like Tommy's not going to say that. But it still serves a purpose. So, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, what you could even do is then you start a sweeper earlier. I uh, that's think clearly not that far away, but then ends and the same spot, give, right? I think I threw a some, sweeper. Comment to him after the game about, you know, being off. Honestly, the I have that said if you didn't. Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, even that is just another indication. Like that is a massive mistake pitch. Yeah, that's that a bad one. That's... It, if he's sitting on this, this is not going foul. Yeah. But he's not. You know, yeah, this is more information. Just... I got. Lucky. Yeah, this is just okay. You just whenever so I do this, I'm like, give me the ball back. Let me do it right, please. Yeah. I I just want that to be erased from the record. But yeah. no, honestly, it, it is a great showcase right. of um the of just two. kind of everything else that you were doing. Good that try. I that you're able to get away with that, right? Yep, that's a good. That's another pretty good little cutter, but a good mm-hmm. take. That's just good. What are you gonna do? Right Fifteen there. extra base. Right like, sweeper. Two two. Yeah. Curve. Oh, is it the curve wow. though. That looked like it had a lot more hump to it. Yeah, that was a curveball. Okay, so it's pretty good. Just throwing uh, all so... the spin at him, like. <laughs> I mean, so okay, so it's three two now. And you've, you're comfortable throwing off speed in, in three, two counts. So it's going to be a cutter. And this one, I'm like, let's just tie on. I'm thinking like ground ball. In there, got him. Yeah, that's that's good though. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, he hadn't seen a cutter in the zone yet. Yeah, not down there. Like, not. Right. So that one right there, I'm literally thinking it's ground ball to short. Yeah. Um, I had thrown enough that at bat of first sitting at a fastball, a backup sweeper, like. I was just in a good spot there because I had thrown yeah. a lot, but I don't want to make my living throwing Tommy Fan backup sliders. Like he, if I throw that exact same sequence again, he's probably taking that sweeper and crushing it. So yeah, and and also him messing on that sweeper kind of showcases that you can't really go sinker inside because he's gonna yeah. swing that one too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was... totally get that. All right, so now you have Side. Christian Walker up. You throw a beautiful right cutter. Oh, please tell me that's fair. That is, it, it is was. fair. Oh, that's so I was just nice. Good with the cutter at that point. Was that's straight, like, yeah, you're nailing that. Raffle completely. Well, former Wrigley Field ambassador through the eighth inning that's of each great. game. I mean, yeah, there's no, no better gift than to end an inning on like a yeah. on just a little dribble like that one pitch. I was just jogging off the field. That one felt good, and then I think that was back, <laughs> backdoor cutter right there. Oh, you're right. You're starting off the fifth inning backdoor cutter to Thomas. Uh, oh, another changeup, and this is a good situation to try it out too, right? Yeah. So right there, it, I'm thinking. I know it's my worst pitch. Like, I don't want to get beat on it. And so I'm just taking a shot there. Maybe a swing and miss, maybe a ground ball, but I'm not going to miss over the plate. Right. And you know, one thing I do want to note is that, especially to right-handers, you've thrown maybe, what, one or two inside the zone. Yeah. Uh, the entire time. It's I'm a huge fan of that. Because uh, yeah, as a surprise pitch, you got Moreno on it. Yep. You almost got Fam on it. Yep. Um, and let everything else work. And I mean, you had the cutter oh, that day, strike. of course, but yep. the cutter's always going to be there. It's great. Uh, one one after that change, you can probably follow up with the fast one. Uh, say you go to the curveball, and yeah, Thomas failed at the curveball before. You know? Got it back to the first at bat. And that one was better than some of the ones I threw the first at bat. Cool. Like, sure. Taking another shot on a curveball. Yeah, right. Real and it worked easy. Now. Baseball's easy. No problem. Uh, there's the sinker. You're trying to do it back door. Is that right? I think that was a four seam. That was just like, okay. a, let's get ahead. I don't ever want to throw a fastball OO there necessarily, but like, I also cut try to cut bigger areas of the plate early. So mm-hmm. that one sprayed a little bit. I would have been happy if that was maybe two balls more over away. But sure, just get ahead, get yeah. ahead, heater. 
And just as I mentioned, strip. no fastballs yeah, over about the plate. You do one, but it works out. It's good. Too, so I know guys are going to be maybe a little more patient, like mm. trying to get my pitch count out type thing. So that's a great call. Uh, probably cut her back here. It's got to be. I mean, that's just been your bread and butter here. Uh, this would be a typical situation for the sinker to come inside. Just because I, you have the cutter away that you've showcased and maybe leaned away early in the count, possible quick out. I agree, but I think this day we were just like, yeah, so get off of that, yeah, like cutter sweeper force. I mean, it was working that. absolutely. But on a on a normal day, yeah, this is a really good sinker count. I mean, yeah, you're killing it with those cutters down and away. I mean, it's 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 fantastic. Uh, you see a whiff on that sweeper, and you throw another the more, one. They're all in the lineup here yeah. today. Yeah, easy. Check swing yeah. and he that was like struck a, him out. That was an aggressive and like, that is set. on the harder end for my sweeper. Yeah. That, was, that was like a more aggressive good one. Yeah, absolutely. And again, are you I mean, when you're releasing that, especially after the other one that was more over the plate, is there an adjustment that you're making as you deliver the next one? Literally in my head, just like step on this, be more aggressive. Um, yeah. when the sweeper's really good, I almost feel like I step. And I don't, it doesn't look any different, but I almost feel <laughs> in my head, like I step a little across my body and uh -huh. I put myself in a position to like really leverage around the ball sure. versus being like more linear and behind it. I'm like almost thinking like cross body to, so that makes, that one I mean, it makes all the sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that mentality is just that little adjustment of your hand on release can be everything. So, yep. Uh, you might not be able to see it, but it's, it's there. Seven strikeouts this season. Uh, and there's a fastball away that is bounced, and you got it. Uh, that's so interesting. It's like you beat him on the four seamer in the previous at bat, uh, and sometimes you can play with that where they're so hyper aware of it. Some guys are just like, "Oh no, all I care about is this fastball." The next one, and you, yeah. this is not a strike to Moreno. High with seven I, strikeouts this season. Know, and he, high and he gets himself eight. out. Of it. It's interesting to see it's a bounced, honestly. I'm also just thinking there, like, I remember being kind of like surprised he swung. Just mm -hmm. you have a catcher, a good defensive catcher who, who really knows the game. And I'm thinking right there, like, maybe he just, I'm looking at a really quick inning with a first pitch out yeah, right there. Yeah, right, right. It's like a 10 pitch inning again. And I'm just thinking kind of like, that pitch wasn't a strike. I wanted it to be a strike because I thought he was probably taking just sure. to like give his guy a little more time to try to get my pitch count up. But also on the flip side, he could have been thinking the exact same thing and said, he's going to groove a fastball here. I'm going to be aggressive and try to make a difference. And uh, he just put it on the ground. Oh, man. Not the short yeah, exactly right. Yeah, that's, that's the extra level of it. In. Um, to the ballpark. And you, once again, you're feeling good as you walk off the mound. First offering to Lawler. You haven't, and pre you haven't allowed a hit yet. Right, yeah. No <laughs> hits. Nah. Yeah, this was a good cutter right here. Same pitch he grounded out on the first at bat. Just younger guy. I'm telling myself, like, you didn't get me on the first one. You, I'm going to make you kind of show me you can get to it. I don't know. Um, I mean, of course. I mean, first pitch cutter, absolutely. That's just been your bread and butter completely. And Fertree saying, don't jin jinx him, Nick, because yeah, uh, that had to have been going through your head after five. Uh, I'm, I honestly don't remember. It, this <laughs> one was weird because I walked Carol to lead off the game. So it's not right. like I was in the lineup the whole day. Like I went to the stretch right away. So I wasn't, I honestly don't think I was really thinking about it, to be honest. Sure. Game, he got a chance to check. Oh, these are guys. You too. And we have that well, person, of course, yeah, comes live here. Uh, but hey, uh, listen, then you have one of the rare mistakes where it just didn't work out of your hand. That was, I Bad believe, sweeper. the sweeper. Yeah. I'm just so every so often it does happen like that. And do you feel it again coming out too far? As you're that one to was it? honestly like so bad that I wouldn't even <laughs> chalk that up to like a small miss. That's just like a something bad, weird happened. Yeah. My timing was off. Like that's not yeah, like yeah. that's when you see a miss that big, like when it's a little baby miss, I can like think in my head let's walk back the hand here let's think about like the connection of my arm that right there is just such a spray it's like just move on yeah that's the weird dot that you'll see sometimes in the yeah on the strike zone plots uh all right so fans after that one i love organization cutter coming back special. of course that's just your bread yeah. and butter of this day and i hope that you go back to the, in the world series you can still do it and you do that mvp award yeah. that's a good so, shape to it make him say no like we talked about like I'm thinking right there, I've landed some stuff away. Maybe he's going to think this is a cutter that's going to be tighter and land on the plate. Right. And I'm going to sweep it. 
good job by him taking a good pitch. Like that's yep. just good baseball right there. And do you do you feel a good long walk that you should go back to it here in in two two after he took that one, or are you thinking no? I, I gotta think I throw a heater right back. here. Well, yeah, two two to Lawler. Swing oh, that's, a- see, that's the upstairs fastball. It's so good. That's the one we Love talked it. about. Like his target was away, but I was not trying to throw that away middle away Man. that's like i see the target away and i'm just trying yeah. to like drive it through the big For area good long while right so this is the glove right here is not even yeah. actually at the top of the zone it's kind of yeah. away middle to, to the yeah. some of my misses, i feel like when i try to go up i miss up and it goes yeah. uncompetitive so it's like that target. and if you set up up and into a ready i might like get a little tentative so that i like yeah. that target and that's me being super aggressive like through a nice area yeah that's great. I mean, I just saw what I dreamed of in 2021. Yeah. You know, I saw yeah, these, the perfect cutter down away, sweeper down away, and the amazing four seamer up. This is it. Yeah. And these are things that hopefully, you know, we all take an off season to look back on and say, these are the targets I like. These are the sure. sequences I like when this is working. We can set up this with that. It's like me and Miguel and Maya now going to spring this year. And last year, I was just getting to know his name and remember who he was. And now right, this year, right. I get to go in and he knows, like, how I like to prepare for a game and what targets I like. Those things really do matter. Absolutely. Oh man, I'm so excited for you. Okay. One out here in the sixth inning, you have Perdomo Perdomo up again, very passive. You're able to get some free real estate with a first pitch curveball. Easy stuff. Um, Or is this the changeup again? No, this is another curveball. And that's actually, so this is opposite of what we were talking about, where he actually has the glove on the ground this time. Yeah. And I think right here, it was like, I landed one nicely Mm -hmm. kind of middle let's just throw it off the same line and land it yeah. lower. So he's thinking like, don't show him. And I had shown him a curveball for a strike the first at bat. Maybe don't show him the same pitch in the same area, but let's, let's, we have real estate here. I'm getting ahead in town. So my pitch counts low. Let's take right. a shot below. I love that you're using real estate. Back now. To work. Thank you so much. Uh, and that's actually, I mean, that's not even a bad spot. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times the guy will be swinging over that one and be aggressive. It is Pernomo, as you mentioned, he is more passive. Um, that doesn't really tell you too much, honestly. The one uh, one. So one one, you go with a fastball, and, and he ooh, rips that. Uh, yeah, that so is up and away down the line. Um, fortunately, he was excited foul. to swing at that for sure. Like, yes, I could feel that. Yeah. he was ready to rip it. And, and, and there's something to be said about he, right, and he and the fact that he's not swinging at the 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 previous curveball, which is somewhat competitive. Yeah. may tell you that i don't know it's a, you can interpret that both ways of like he's on the curveball or that he yeah. just does, he sees a curveball he's just not going to swing at it yeah because he wants the fastball i think it was what you just said I yeah think the latter <laughs> he knows i like to throw my heater in that like kind of like a way up and away yeah. area he sees it and he freaking tries to jump it I just so there's no way this is a fastball now right i think it's a curveball it's got to be uh i mean you could uh, and right you get there, the bottom of the zone single. beautifully. That's great. That's I mean, you know, total... he just didn't want it. Yeah, exactly. He didn't want to chase it. He was probably telling himself, like, don't chase the curveball. Get the heat right. up. Get him up. Just, again, good baseball. Then right here, like, I don't – I didn't think along with that sequence at all. I remember. Mm-hmm. Like, that was all uh, Amaya behind the plate. Like, oh, nice. He's doing all that. Oh, that's great. Uh, that's where the splitter will show up probably too. Yeah, uh, it's because I mean, you see a guy that on that heater, and it's like, okay, if you have a changeup of any kind, you throw two of yep. them now. They'll probably expect the first one and not the second one. Later. Oh, I'm so excited to see that splitter. <laughs> um, all right, so that looks Which like it's a first... cutter you that floats right, up and cutter. away, which I'm sure is not where you're trying to do. You're trying to do that back. No, down. it's just kind of like with that pitch, though. It's like if I get the right shape on it, where it. If that were like the more the 90 mile an hour more vert cutter, like I think he swats that, but because it was like a little bit depthier, started a little more off the plate, had a bit more sure. sweep, he doesn't swing at it. Oh, well, a good hitter's not looking to like do damage on that pitch early. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh, oh one here. Um, you throw a curveball, and this is that annoying. Yeah. Sometimes they just the good hitters are able to slap to the left like, field. That's not a bad pitch. No, it's a great pitch. Honest. He's just a really good player, and I had shown him the curveball before, and he just swats it. That's just, again, good baseball. Uh, it's so annoying that everyone applauds. And a line drive uh, and a base hit in the left field. First you're like, wait, why did you just applaud? For the diamond bat. Uh, I was right. right there. Like, again, it wasn't a bad pitch. Mark. You could have rolled that over to second base the... and you move on. But yeah. I wish I would have bounced that. Like, just 
take a shot. My pitch count's low. I'm ahead in the count. Why not? Sure. The best player on the team, bounce it. But right. He also could have, you know, hit a one hopper to second. And you just yeah. say, eh, that was a pretty good curveball. So Absolutely. that's baseball. Um, so here you are hey, again, top six, sec- uh, two outs again. Uh, Carol is Rookie on the, first year base in the National League as you're against Marte, and you do a backdoor cutter, and you see him swinging away at that one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Does that make you adjust your next pitch now instead of the the typical approach? I don't really remember with that pitch. Like that pitch is interesting. I don't think Marte is like a super passive guy, so I wasn't shocked he was swinging. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, for me, if I throw the right backdoor cutter it's not going to lead to a ton of damage unless it gets that more hoppy conversion. So right Right. there, I'm kind of just like, whatever. (laughs) 30, 60 season for a cool. Well, you know, Carol is going and and a second time. We actually got kind of close to getting him there. That's absurd though. Uh, I mean, there is one gift of this though. I think that was a pitch that Marte completely just did not swing on because he saw Carol moving. Yep. which is a little risky to do when it's two outs. It's easier to do if it's no outs or one or whatever. And if you make contact, it's fine. They're not going to go back to first. Yeah. And I was already ahead in the counts. So now I'm way Yeah. Ahead. And that's Marte turned off on a fastball. That was kind of hittable um, yeah. middle. I mean, it was away, but he could have pushed that maybe to left field yep. being Carol, who knows what he scores. So I'm actually surprised that Marte was just so passive on it. Um, it's a bit of a gift, honestly. Quick. It is. Uh, yeah. And even though he's on third in your head, you're just like, hey, cool. All right. I have, Four pitches again, chase once now. Yep. I don't think I use all four. And this is, again, kind of like ideally going forward, I do throw more breaking balls to the chase next year. Mm-hmm. Um, but like this day, this particular day, I didn't get punished a bunch on it because I felt like my curveball was really sharp and had good shape and good bite. I'm yeah, giving definitely. it away. I throw a curveball and get a mouse. Center, like, so what? Um, I wish I'd do a better job this year bouncing the ball. Well, see, I like that call, which is a four-seamer upstairs here. Absolutely do, because I think I would be thinking that Marte is so passive on the last one. He is hating himself for not swinging at it. So if he gets another one, he would go after it. Surprised he took it, honestly. Yeah, that's like a ball right there, but that's more competitive than some of the fastballs I've seen. Like that right there probably took a little bit of effort on his part to be like, don't swing at that. Right. Um, and I liked like the shape behind that, the intent behind that. Uh, so one thing I do talk about a little is because this is an away one, it's kind of close to being too far away. Yeah. And, you know, I imagine you'd agree that like this is a lot more ideal yeah. in this because this gives them another, you know, being so close to being outside gives them another opportunity to not swing at it. Yeah. See it a little deeper. Um, like, I mean, I'm sure people watching your chat are smart baseball people. So they know, but like if it's away, they can see it deeper. If it's right. in, you have to make your swing decision sooner. So with that being a little more up and away like that is definitely an area where he gets to just track it a little longer. Yeah. Um, and but yeah, it doesn't know if it's a strike away. doesn't know if it's a strike upstairs. And that's yep. uh, able to take that one. But now you can set up the curveball off of that tunnel. And you get yeah, it. Little that's a great one. Dot it down that's away. Get the on the base. We got some good traction with yeah. that curveball. Like again, that backdoor area. And if I miss, I pull it or get it below. And if I really nail it, it just stays in that outer lane. And that's hard for lefties to, like, stay on. Uh, yeah, Jameson, yeah, yeah, that's just a good tunnel. That was a good pitch. And uh, this is the last image I'm going to give you because that was your last last pitch in this one. And by the way, Chad, if you have any questions here for Jameson, now's the time to, to throw them in. Um, did you w- want to come out for the seventh? You must have. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I did. I was in, I was hurting. The back was No, hurt. yeah. You had 77 pitches. Oh, you were in pain during this now still. Yeah, Rossi, after the game, stuck up for me. It was just like, you know, I thought we were making the right decision with where the lineup with, was. And, you know, I wasn't having my best season ever. So, like, no one was going to doubt him pulling me, to be honest. Right. But um, I was pitching pretty well at this point, like, for a stretch. Um, but I think our bullpen was pretty rested at this point, And my back was definitely, it was one of those things where like, I definitely think some of the pills were wearing off and I was kind of like, I don't know. So sure. I no, I, that makes it. all the sense of that, of that one. I, uh, man, I'm just like, dude, this was such a good tie on and I want more of it. I, uh, Chad has a really good question here. Uh, he He's asking about uh, next season because you're going to be more of a, a veteran leadership role for the Cubs and does that change your, does your mental aspect change as you end the spring training where you will work alongside a large number of the future players who will be playing with you in 2024 and 2025? 
Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, I, I take a lot of pride in, in that role. I always, Even when I was a young guy, I took pride in, like, being a good teammate and trying to think of myself as someone who speaks up in, in meetings and, you know, leads by example and shows guys, you know, what a proper weight room routine looks like and being a professional and all that. But yeah, this past year, like, I, I think I was still a great teammate through my ups and downs, no matter what. You would never know if I was struggling or on a good stretch. I take a lot of pride in that. But – you know, new year, new city. I felt a lot last year. Like I was just trying to get my feet under me and like stay afloat. Um, still had a great time with my teammates and all that. But like, again, like I said about Miggy, like last year, I'm getting to know these guys. Like I'm shaking their yeah. hand and remembering them and learning about them. And this year we go in and like, you know, Dansby was in his first year and all these guys were new or getting to know each other. And now we go in and it's like, this is our crew. This is what we've got. And I do take pride in that for sure, whether it's organizing a dinner on the road for the pitchers and catchers or organizing a team event in spring training. Like I, I do take a lot of pride in that. Absolutely. That's great. Uh, Baseball Harmony asks, uh, how stoked are you that they kept Tommy? Stoked. Yeah. That, I got to be honest. Like I'm not a super vocal guy, but whenever we hired him, I remember talking to all the other pitchers and I may have even told like the front office. I was like, we cannot let Tommy go. Like that's <laughs> not negotiable. Tommy, yeah. I tell people this all the time. This is goes for the Cubs too, but really it's like singing praises for Tommy. I had the toughest year of my career. Like I had a, a stretch where I was really struggling for a month, like from what mid May to mid June. And I have never had more fun showing up to the field and working. Hmm. So that right there, like Tommy, I've had stretches in my career where I would pitch well and I'd just show up the next day and everyone would, you know, move on. And it's just like, you're it, what, the most important thing is the game that day. It's not as much relationship based. Like this year, man, I was showing up after like a good or a bad game. And like Tommy would put a smile on my face and he always had something for me. He was always like, Hey dude, I know you're not feeling good right now. I know you want the results, but I love the work we're doing. We're moving in the right. Yeah, that's great here's how we're going to keep moving in the right direction. Here's some drills I have for you. And like for a struggling player, dude, that's all you could ask for. Like I yeah. want to show up and have someone who has my back and believes in me and thinks we're, you know, sometimes you just need that little bit of hope to hold on to. And like, I ended up, I think for my last, from the all-star break on, I was averaging almost six innings to start with like a three, three, like that to me really, speaks to Tommy and the ability for him to make it interesting to show up and work on things and keep getting better. He was like tirelessly working for me. That that's fantastic. Was there one, you know, maybe tweak or one piece of advice that you really learned from Tommy uh, that you still hold on to? Yeah. I, I mean, I think Tommy, he's good at a lot of things um, as a pitching coach. The, the thing that I think he's best at is the ability to like, just not have an ego, like mm -hmm. anything he, he can help you with it's not all about himself like he's gonna say hey moscos wants to show you some ball flight stuff or some you know plyo ball weighted ball drills or hey danny holson wants to sit down and and show you some stuff on ivy like our database he wants to show you some information like he's really good at just like making a very cohesive work environment um but i loved working with tommy doing medicine ball drills off the mound um, hmm. I think we found a few drills off the mound before games that like really turned my season around. Oh yeah. Oh wow. So, uh, yeah, it's just it's... helping with your core and just uh, timing essentially. Yeah. So he gets, we would get out there together earlier, um, you know, five minutes earlier than normal before a game. And we would do this on bullpen day, bullpen days too. And mm -hmm. you would do one where I get to my leg lift. I'm in my locked in loaded position. If you can't see my full body right now. <laughs> I'm like hinging. I'm sitting. Right. My leg's up, he throws me the ball, and I get it and go. And there's another one where, you know, I'm in my, my leg lift. I bounce it off the ground, catch it, and then go um, all while focusing. That's athleticism, lower body movement, but also, like, we were working a bit on my stride direction. So, mm -hmm. like I, I said about my setup out of the stretch, like, a little bit of preset tension in my backside, not striding so open, striding more in line to a little bit closed. I thought that right yeah. there like helped everything that's fantastic uh one more question here i uh, and really can't thank you enough jameson for taking so much time yeah, with us this has just I been a blast <laughs> this is the best uh <laughs> this is from robbie uh robbie wool he asks uh you know some of the stuff that we've been talking about of course uh and uh what are you looking forward to carry over from the second half of this year into next year yeah it's it's not just one thing for me like i i really do think the 
when my season turned around, it wasn't one thing. It was a lot of things like the med ball drills with Tommy, uh, the relationships with the catchers, the relationships with the strength coaches and trainers. Like I'm at my best when I feel like I have a locked in routine and program and like going into next year, even the little things again, like knowing people's names, like, Mm -hmm. um, knowing what time I like to do my meetings before a game for a day game and a night game and Tommy knowing what drills I like to do and what cues I need. And, uh, Tommy knowing what my bullpen routine looks like and what I like to work on between starts. Like I'm just looking forward to none of that being a secret anymore. Like now we're all so on the same page and I feel like we've been in the trenches and gone to battle together to where now, like we know who I am when I'm at my best and when I'm thriving. And that to me is what I'm like super excited about. They've, see me now have some success and understand like, that's what it looks like. This is who he is. Um, so yeah, it's not one thing. It's like carrying over. I learned a lot this year, carrying over a lot. <laughs> and trust well, me, I took notes all... on all of it. I wrote it all down. Like just so I, Oh, forget. fantastic. Yeah. Pablo Lopez had a notebook of every start that he was sharing with us, which was just made me so happy internally to know that that exists. Yeah. And I that one day hope to buy it at auction. Me. <laughs> I just got to Arizona, all my stuff's in boxes, but like I, and this was documented on like the Cubs marquee network, but I, I take notes now on my pre day, like every day I have my journal every single day. I do a pre and post work day. I do what my schedule is that day. I do what my intentions are that day. Like what I want to get better at. Yeah. Um, I do some affirmation stuff. Like I write down every single day, like I'm at my best when I prepare my best. And that motivates me to go do my video work and do my prep work um, and, you know, lock into that routine. And then after the day, what did I do well today? What can I get better at? Stop, start, That's continue. Great. Like, um, what's my schedule tomorrow? Like I, I write all that. I review every outing. It's, it's a big piece of, of what I do. I think that's so awesome. And this is completely separate from your coffee journal, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have one of those. I did, uh, I did play with a guy who had a translator back in the day, um, who had a coffee notebook, Temperature he likes to brew everything at. Ethiopian beans brew better at 195. Colombian better at 200. Like the grind size of everything, like super locked into it. But that's I didn't me. think I, that I'm, you'd be ousted or at least I uh, one up here. I know. I wig it with my coffee a little bit more. But when it comes to like pitching and baseball in my career and routine, I'm very type A. I like everything written down. Yeah. I think that's fantastic. Uh, but really, Jameson, thank you so much uh, for spending the time with us today. This is so much fun. Uh, it's yeah, great to see all the insights blast. that you have and just a look into what you're developing and, and doing. We're all excited for you in 2024. I'm really stoked, actually, to in so many ways uh, to see how you've been developing with the Cubs too and hearing everything yeah, about you and the organization. This was, this was a fun hang. And you know, hopefully the stuff that we worked on and, and got better at carries over into this year. And um, I think it's going to be a great year. Yeah, we can't wait to see it. Uh, James and Tyne, everybody. Uh, my name is Nick Pollock. Thank you so much for joining today. Uh, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.